This episode is brought to you by DistroKid. If you're an artist, musician, in a band and want to get your music up on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, DistroKid can do that for you. If you head over to distrokid.com slash Garza, you will get 30% off. That's distrokid.com slash VIP slash Garza to get 30% off if you sign up today. We are also brought to you by EMG Pickups. I've been using them for well over 10 years. The 817 gives me that identifiable heavy sound that I love. Go to emgpickups.com and use the promo code HEAVY at checkout to save 15%. That's emgpickups.com, promo code HEAVY to get 15% off your entire order. Back rolling. Cool. Well, we are officially rolling. My dudes, my brothers, thank you all for being here. Mm-hmm. I got to cheers all you guys. I some guys oh, have waters. Oh, oh. I, need, hey, I cheers, need water cheers, first. Cheers, I'll cheers, have a beer cheers, after. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Go ahead. Cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers. Boom, boom. Dan Kenny, cheers in the vape, dude. Cheers in the vape. So this podcast will come out probably a couple months from now, but it is May 2nd, and we just got done recording our, our record uh, mm-hmm. last Friday, so it's fresh. So we decided let's just talk about it now. And then, uh, yeah, so we are all here, stoked. We got also, by coincidence, we also started getting masters today of our record, and I think, I think we're pretty horny. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, everybody in this room has oh. a combined horny power of plus 100, dude. Plus it's, for uh, for 1, context, 000. though, horny has been the, ex- the, word. Yeah. the, the adjective used <laughs> the theme as, of the record. As opposed to excited or stoked. Yes. So it's, it's, started, it's, it's an evolved from horned up. Well, it, it, it is. It came from horned up, but it's which we not, have, which we have Dan Kenny to thank for. Yeah, yeah. Heavy, uh, the, hev- the drunk guy from The Bachelor. That's yeah, right. Him to thank. <laughs> yes, that's right. It started yes. as heavy as possible. Yes. The yeah. group chat amongst us and Taylor is hap, which coined by Garza. Hap. Hap is heavier. Er, Heavy as possible. Heavy as possible. Heavy I tried possible. to name the record heavier than possible. Heavier than possible. Yeah. Be sick. <laughs> it's, it's still a great, a great name. I think, I think it is. It's a good it working is. title. It you is. know, it's funny. It, it sounds like it could be like no offense to these bands or anything. It could be like Exodus. It could be an Exodus title or like totally. a Testament yeah, yeah. album or something. No. Yeah, uh, but yeah, heavier than possible. But yeah, no, nope, what is it? DNR, we're, do not resuscitate. You know, <laughs> kinds, kinds of, heavier than possible. We're, we're horny sure. as possible, though. <laughs> yeah. When it comes yeah. to this record, horny as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two days into drum tracking, you know, it became horny as possible. Really, that's, <laughs> that's what happened. Dude. Blame it on big sperm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's what's more exciting than being horny? You know, that's the yeah. ultimate excitement. <laughs> this, this man's got a point, dude. Oh. I mean, there's no. Is there a more exciting feeling? No. I mean, you, that could be a stifling feeling too. You know, if you're horny <laughs> and, you yeah, go, and you got nowhere to go yeah, with that, yeah. like, <laughs> worse. You know, that's tour true, bus that. horny, dude. That's true. You know, you're on the that's bandwagon. True. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's bad. That's, true. that's bad. <laughs> and shout out to Taylor Young. He did a phenomenal job, and he was trying so hard not to say horny. <laughs> but I broke him. I broke him. He did. I'm a. Uh, he did one. I'm claiming that one. He did. He was trying so hard because we, we would say it pretty much all day. Man, I am. Man, that that part is horny. <laughs> And, and uh, he was like, he just won't say anything. He just wouldn't buckle, and he, dude. And, and he finally, finally, he finally, he gave in to how sick everything was sounding. He was like, guys, uh, uh, I can't believe I'm going to jump on the wagon, but this uh, this sounds pretty horny. I was like, yeah. there it is, dude. I remember there when it is. happened. I, I, dude, I was feels. like, he like turned his chair around. He did. Perfectly, he, he like, with his leg up and everything and just, <laughs> like, sounds pretty horny. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude! Yeah, Taylor. Oh, oh man, yeah, he's, Taylor killed it. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a great he's a man. Great, he's a great boy. Taylor's dude. Young, a good boy. Young legend, dude. I know. Yeah. Very, it, it, very stoked to, to have worked with him on this record. A hundred percent. Mike Gitter, who are, is our A and R at Century Media, he will take credit for for referring us to Taylor. Of but course. However, <laughs> however, 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 the reality you know, is the, the tr- we've been we've been eyeing eyeing Taylor for a long, long time, man. I, I've been a fan of Twitching Tongues and Nails for a long time, so it was. Uh, it was cool to be working with somebody that I've always appreciated. 100%. Yeah, you showed me Twitching Tongues, mm-hmm. and they were, well, Inhumane. Was, what's the name of the song? Inhu- uh, 
Inhumane or whatever the hell that song is. You know, I'm bad with names. I know. That song was like my favorite song for so long. But Taylor fucking it's killed that, it. It's that that record. It's it's a No no Love in War. Is that what it is? That, that's the name of the record? Mm, uh, no, there, there's No Law in Love or no something No Law in like Love. That. That's, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Nice. And that record is fucking incredible. That, he is a legend. Yeah. He's a mind. It was great working. Well, with it's him. like, yeah. it, it, and he—I yeah. mean, he does—he does it all. He sings, plays guitar, he plays drums. Like, mm-hmm. and, he's, and he's sick at yeah. all of it. Yes. And then, uh, the stuff yeah. that he was showing us what was yeah. the, what was the band that he he showed us, Dan? <laughs> also, <laughs> also, <laughs> also, he showed us a lot of bands. Yeah, no, the, the, la- the last it was, band it, he was so heavy, it's silent. <laughs> also, for the record, uh, it's Monday, and Dan Kenny just uh, had a great weekend. So if he, he seems, just woke yeah, up, he just, if he seems kind of hungover, <laughs> and it's also in the evening, we already rehearsed today. Yeah, We've had a yeah. long Dan, day. Dan Kenny's day. clocked out for the day, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, uh, I'm clocked in right now. Are you clocked in? <laughs> what'd you, did you guys? What'd you have for lunch? Did you guys have wobble? I had wobble grill. Dude. Yeah. Do you wobble grill with my new, my new love for sure? Would you get the plant based steak? Yeah, he did. When, oh what! When, when, when I saw a plant-based steak, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm going there, and it was it exceeded what I thought it was, it was going to be. Would you say it was like Michelin star worthy? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, what's that? A oh, star, right? Three, uh, three, it's three stars. Three stars is, is, is the top. Yeah, can't go any higher than three stars. If, if you're talking fast food, <clears throat> like three stars, I will give it a three star for fast food. Three yeah. stars. For, it's a three star Michelin for fast food. Well, you guys heard the man Waba sponsor us, dude. Like, Would you yeah. say it's yeah horny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was definitely uh, horny as possible. For sure. <laughs> I'm horned up because that that is the struggle. Like you want to go out. Sometimes it's fast food, and you want you want like the middle ground to hit. It's like okay, I want it to taste good, but also I want some veggies and be healthy at the same time. That's a hard <laughs> fucking line to hit, dude. Yeah, and Waba yeah. Grill does it. Waba flame while, while still broiler. being fast food. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. It, took, it took them how long to make mine, so that wasn't that fast. Because they don't like you, Dan. <laughs> yeah. what, you, what did you order? Steak bowl. Oh, okay. Did you get your steak well done? No. They, made, for, they made it well done, though. <laughs> he asked for a steak bowl with spicy chicken, and they were like, we can't do that. Yeah, oh, we yeah. can't, oh, we can't give you spicy protein? chicken on top of the... And they they got all mad at him. That's so a, horn, that's a horny boy right there, extra. <laughs> Oh, my God. God. Some, some of those boy. steaks weren't steak, God, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, Ernie, I, I'm just curious. What do you think about the drums? And, and how... And, and, uh, were were they what you were expecting, and, or what were you expecting? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's on the spot. No, I'm just like, yeah, it's, it, I was getting weird. I get put on the spot. No, like uh, all joking aside, all all seriousness, I uh, uh, I'm blown away by what uh, like what we've listened to today and all that stuff. Even for, yeah. even from the time that we got done tracking drums and just kind of like the raw stuff that we were listening back to that. Um, that like uh, what's the guy's name uh, Oliver? Oliver. That he was like you know shout like out. like editing. Yeah, shot at Oliver. What a gnarly individual. Super fast, super sick. Um, just the stuff that was done in in the room there at six oh six. Like by the time we left, like start guitars and all that stuff. <clears throat> I was already re- like really excited like of what like a foundation that we had laid just drums. And I was just like wow like this already sounds sick. Like if this is the starting point, everything else is gonna get put on top of it. It's just. It, there, there was no way that it could be bad. Yeah. Like, you know, with like, with like all due respect, I'm not trying to sound like fucking like arrogant or cocky or whatever. Just he got a great performance out of everyone, myself included. And I feel like when you start with, uh, when I say he, I mean Taylor, got a great performance out of everyone. And when you start with a platform like that, it it makes everything else super sick and easy. And this has been one of the more like fulfilling recording experiences I've ever had in my. 17 years of playing music so wow yeah i'm i'm really stoked and like i'm excited for everyone else to hear it when you know it inevitably hits the streets it's it's an exciting record to say the least is this your first time writing an lp or had you have you done a bunch of lps before eps have you done a bunch of Um, recording stuff yeah i mean obviously not on a level like this and you know going back to the last record same thing i wrote a lot of drums on that one as well yeah um that was obviously a much different writing experience with a different producer and all that stuff but I mean, and, um, and you know you came in half the record was already done this is there's so, that this, too this yeah it was like, like a weird time crunch and it was like mm-hmm. 
you know, and for what it was, it was still great and came out fucking fantastic. Um, but before then, I mean, I've done stuff like, you know, on, on a smaller level with bands that were necessarily like, you know, national touring acts or anything like that. But I've definitely, I mean, at this point, I've probably recorded drums on know, nine or ten albums or something like that. Awesome. EPs right. and stuff like that. And then full length albums of smaller bands that I was in before making the jump to touring full time with bigger bands. And this is a wow. total, total different experience. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. It's way sicker. And, then, and for, all around for for the record, we yeah we we did we did the 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 drums at six oh six, which if anybody doesn't know is Dave Grohl's studio. There's a great it's a documentary called it's called Sound City. Yes, yeah, it's a great so, documentary yeah. called Sound City about how that kind of came to be and and the history of all that. So I'll just skip all that shit. But did it? It was awesome. Ernie recorded five songs the first day. Which is mainly a setup day normally. Normally it's yeah. like set up, yeah. get tones, maybe do a yeah. song or two if you're lucky. Yeah. Ernie we set up and Ernie knocked out five <laughs> songs yeah. in a day. And it was insane. I uh I like to work, dude. And I, it, I like to work and just He took a Viagra you know, before coming in. Let's be blue, serious. Blue chew. Blue chew. Blue chew. So he was Shout out, guys. <laughs> sponsor me wherever you're at. Blue he, was, <laughs> he was horrible. Blue chew. Sponsor podcast. They fucking sponsor podcast. Dude, yeah. blue chew. Yo, Shout out. Please. Yeah. Garza podcast, dude. Listen, dude, Garza you're, needs you're looking it, at a table full of <laughs> you're looking at a table full of horny boys, dude. It's the horniest Look podcast. The horniest podcast. Dude, did we just did we just did we just market market your slogan right now, dude? <laughs> dude horniest podcast there is. Podcast there oh, is all the land, dude. <laughs> the oh my god! But but Holy okay, god. so Six about slogan. the drums though. Day two though, we knocked out all the easy songs on day one. Day two, the other six. That was a that was a that was a hard day to get the six it, done in one day. It was, but we still got done two hours early. We did, and we yeah. had a fantastic dinner that night. I remember. And for lunch we had salsa and beer, which was also great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, you had yeah. Day day two was a uh, free the, free, the big guy, Mac, guy, free Big Macs and expensive and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> That's you got for dinner. <laughs> uh, day number two, the guys finally realized that I am indeed human. I was getting a little yes. frustrated towards the end of that towards the end of that session there. I've been waiting. Oh oh oh! End end. Lest we forget, dude. Whole record, one pair of sticks. Let's go. Oh, what up? One pair of sticks. One pair of dropped sticks. Dropped them four times total. Four times. <laughs> we, we caught it all. We, we caught it all on, on camera. Yeah, got it all it's all camera for you. It'll be, it'll, be, <laughs> it'll be in the unedited, it's currently unedited documentary that we will have made. It'll, it'll show every <laughs> stick he dropped. Yeah. Um, but also, <laughs> we, we only did like what? Like one and a half songs to click? Because, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, yeah. like, Full Void, which is the last song, I think we did the first half of it to click and, and then, then what was the other song we Dying did? Life oh well Dying Life no and then Alter oh yeah because of the breakdown at the yeah. end yeah so, so yeah. two and a half songs yeah. two and a half songs on click and the rest oh, are yeah. all free yeah. balling it's all free straight balling. up off the cuff yeah. Ernie is a and, uh, human clock I try I definitely crazy. try. When when we got but but listen, it also helps when you have other sick musicians in the band. So shout out there you go. shout oh, out yeah. you dinguses too. Wow. He figured right. it out. He figured Dude. it out. He I've always known. All right, that's come called on. a bro job, folks. Just so that's, you guys know, that's, uh, that's <laughs> what they just gave each other. Job. A sick bro job right there. <laughs> My hands are above the table. I swear. <laughs> I got to uh, to build off what what Mark was saying. I'm trying to make make it as condensed as possible because there's a lot of history in that room. So that's the, obviously what Mark said. That's the Dave Grohl Foo Fighters. Rehearsal studio. Uh, just so people are aware, that, uh, I'm, I'm going to try not to get spiritual and woo-woo, but that week we were in the last week of March, uh, and Ernie was done playing drums on the 25th. Yeah. We, we were done. And uh, we all go home, and we look at our phones and find out that Taylor Hawkins has passed away. Which was wild. So wild. Uh, we were just... There in that in yeah. that room, like you, we you were just we, pa- we packed out the night before, went to Taylor's in the morning to start setting up for guitars, got tones, and then left to go eat dinner. And Taylor walked outside and stopped us in the street. And was like, dude, you guys are not gonna believe this. They just found Taylor Hawkins passed away. And we were just like, what? Like just tripping because I was we, in his car. We, we were supposed to be in the, in studio, the studio still we that had day. Four days blocked out, and like I said earlier, we finished the drums in two, so we didn't go in that Friday or whatever it was. So yeah, we. We were supposed to be there, and like, thank God we weren't, because that would have been that would have been an awful terrible. Day. They would have sent, sent us home. Well, also because yeah, everybody that works there are 
all foos. Yeah, they're like they're crew. The family. Yeah. They're yeah. crew. Yeah. They yeah. record them. They work with them. They they're all very yeah. Very they're close. they're very very close. I mean, that's their again not to go too far into the history, but that's their that's their practice spot. That's yeah, their yeah, yeah. that's it's their headquarters. That's their it is gar- garage. Their... garage. They have yeah. all their. Mm-hmm. You know, all, a, a bunch of their memorabilia there, a bunch of the really cool stuff. I'm not going to go too far into it, but it's so badass. It's, it the is. place is it's, awesome. Yeah. Place has a special like mojo and like juju in it when you walk in. You can smell it. Yeah, the like, fucking if that makes sense. board is signed by Paul McCartney and Stevie Nicks, dude. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's pretty yeah. tough. Dude. Yeah, that's, that's you can't beat that. No, yeah. and that no. and that board, he got the uh, the first tool, the first rage, uh, Nirvana. Never mind. Yeah, uh, never mind. My, is on that my, board. my personal opinion, the heaviest record of all time is Slipknot's Iowa. Slipknot Iowa is recorded on that board. So it's just, and it's, to me, it's all about like foundation. And to me, like the drums, Absol- absolutely. Not to put pressure on you, but the drums are just the foundation. No, I'm, I'm, got, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm aware of the, of the role and the position that it takes to do something like that and, and make that kind of thing happen and make it something, you know, memorable and special and good. <laughs> and yeah. also adding to that, like, and and maybe some maybe some people wouldn't understand this, but being in a room like that, tracking drums in a room like that, like is is intimidating, like to a degree. You're like absolutely, hell I yeah. Imagine. Like I know we joking around and we're talking a lot of shit, you know, having a good time or whatever with what, everyone in the same room. What but, were you really thinking? Oh, dude, to me it was like okay, I'm gonna track drums in a room that like guys like Lombardo and Carrie and like legends, dudes that I look up to, have tracked legendary albums in this room. Uh, you know, or even spent time in there. To me, that's a big deal. Like mm-hmm. when you're when you're under the microscope like that with all these crazy, like expensive, like microphones and like historic, like pieces of equipment and stuff like that that you're using. It's like it really like makes you want to give an even better performance than you might have already been planning on doing. You're just like, damn, like it, there's just something in the air in that room that's just like, damn, this is special, and you got to make sure it's sick so that like. It translates in the music, and when you hear it as like as as a as a finished product and all that stuff, like I want that to translate over and be like, damn, like you can really tell they were just giving it hundred and fifty percent the entire time, yeah. like. But yeah, that's genuinely how I feel. All joking aside, from all the jokes we make and shit like that, like yeah, it's it's a big deal to me, for yeah. sure. I mean, that's <clears throat> that is a huge part of recording is getting yourself in that mindset of yes of. Wow, like the people who have recorded here, but even even more than that, you can go even further and be like, oh well, like these are the songs that people are gonna hear live. So I'm gonna put myself in the mindset. I mean, that's what I used to do before I had the money to record in places that had history. You know, you just kind of put yourself into the mindset of like, well, this instrument for me, it's the microphone. So I'm gonna pretend like this microphone is a big audience. You know, I'm, I'm sure you do that with the drums that you're like in the show. You're yeah. in that moment, you know. Yeah. You're you're kind of like above yourself, looking. You're in the zone, you know. You're, you're, you, 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 well, yeah. I I feel like it's a it's it's a bit of trying to uh, capture that feeling or effect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. which I know is a difficult thing to do. It, you know, playing in a controlled environment like a studio versus playing live is like night and day. And I feel like a lot of the like refinements and stuff that you focus on in the studio as soon as you walk on stage that shit goes out the window mm. and i mean oh, yeah, you know it does and you, <laughs> you guys have obviously you know done a couple mm. fill-in shows of me where it was like you know me and him were like jamming in the green room we're like okay cool sick yeah and then walk on stage and i'm playing everything a fucking oh, thousand yeah. miles an hour because it's just like yeah. i'm hyped yeah you I'm get horned up dude yeah, you're going a <laughs> thousand miles an hour yeah, you, you, fucking, you get that adrenaline pumping and it's a and whole there's no stopping game, it. man i hey. think at three or four <clears throat> times during this set i'd look over at mark and he'd be like <laughs> and I'm, fu- I'm, I'm looking at him like what are you talking about I'm not playing fat and we're just fucking flying dude and then like I'd go back and like watch the videos that people recorded on their phones on YouTube and I was like fuck we were smoking through that dude, song right you, now like, you, you had me busy boning <laughs> for so sure hard, <laughs> 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 how is he fucking singing so you know, fast hey, special one night set dude we're gonna play everything 25 BPM faster dude. keep up guys come on <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but it's still solid and like it's uh, uh-huh. at least you uh, you kept the train still going on the tracks you know yeah. barely but I did you barely, know? But yeah, yeah man we, we got through it hey, got dude, through it the Emerson yeah. let's be serious did it matter no it didn't yeah. we you know what you could have dropped it, every stick and it just and it wouldn't it have wouldn't mattered. have mattered. <laughs> There were, would, there were like 20 people How there. is the Emerson still a venue? Dude, the McDonald's across the street was <laughs> banging. That That's was about all, the only cool thing about yeah. that entire Th- that part day, of town. That day the Big Macs were expensive and the, the hookers were cheap. <laughs> I bet I bet the real estate there is cheap. 
Oh God! It's not. It's not too expensive. So they, they, pay you, they pay you to be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, well, yeah. They, they, yeah. There's like a, a fund for the Emerson Theater. <laughs> yeah. Save like, the Emerson, dude. We, reno- we renovated. We renovated the place. It's like, what did you paint the stage? It's made of particle board. Like, I knew. I no, knew. no, no, no. You remember that hole in the cement in the back? We we uh, made it a little bigger. We put, a, we put water in it. We put water in it. And, and then, then there was like, there was like that weird. It's a hot like, tub. Now. There was when we walked in in the morning and like. And like James Lynch was like, "Hey, like the fire marshal's here trying to shut the venue down because <laughs> yeah. there's like there's excess lumber on the ground in the middle of the dance floor." And like we walked in, and it was Yo. like two by four slats with like chicken wire around them and like rocks yeah. in the middle of it. We're like, <laughs> because they what had, do they you had, guys do? They, with they this? had a like, backyard wrestling yeah. event <laughs> at the venue they, the day before. So they had a backyard wrestling event at the venue. We show up, and they, the backyard wrestling event was illegal. They didn't have a permit for it, and a bunch of people got hurt. That were part of the crowd, so the, they called the fire marshal for our show, and they hadn't moved anything out. They hadn't; they, their exits weren't on point. It was awesome. And <laughs> they tried to shut down that show. That was, that that was that still show. a fun day. It was. It was. was, still a fun it day. was uh, you I know? remember drinking tequila before we went on stage, yeah, and like not wow. warming up and shout, not giving shout, a fuck. Shout out to the uh, the bar and pub directly around the corner from it. I went in there to uh, use their their little boys facility because there wasn't a suitable one at the venue. And oh, the, yeah. uh, the nice lady behind the bar was like, hey, you got to buy a drink or something if you're going to, you know, use our restroom. And I was like, well, okay. I didn't really feel like drinking. It's like, you guys sell food? She's like, yeah, we have pizza and hot dogs. I was like, yeah, I'll get a slice of pizza. Nope. And I watched her reach down into the freezer and pull out like a Stouffer's frozen pizza. Nice. And she put that shit in the microwave and charged me like six bucks for it. And I had a frozen pizza. <laughs> and then, you know. Use the facilities. Six bucks. <laughs> and, then, and then you ate it later around 3 a.m. I did, and it was <laughs> fantastic, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds, <laughs> sounds like a great day at the Emerson. Yeah, Stan- standard, as is tradition. Standard, dude. Man, all of your will parties goes away after 2 a.m. So dude, the fact that you yeah. had a frozen pizza, dude. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have a choice. I mean, I could have just paid for it and been like, I just really want to pee in your bathroom because the other one's not working. Like, But if I got to buy something, I mean, well, a pizza it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to buy booze. I got free booze on the bus, dude. <laughs> Who else was on on that show? Was it just us? It was just us and 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 just and locals. Yeah, a couple of local bands. We invited Uh, uh, all hail the Eddie, but they had COVID at the time. Oh, that COVID. Yeah, yeah. And then we all got COVID about two weeks later. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Something that I didn't expect. I was very wrong about this. Is I did not expect the whole band to get COVID. <laughs> so, yeah, we can't play the show at all. We yeah. all got it. Yep. By the way, fun fact, even though I wasn't in that camp at the time, it was Garza's fault. I heard. We've been told. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, here we go. I can I can uh, okay. tell Garza about an inside joke that he doesn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go. Even I know we, about we, it. We, 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 we were all singing, blame it on Garza. Dude, yeah. Blame it on Garza. <laughs> blame it on Garza. <laughs> it's all his fault. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, sorry, dude. Guys. He he decided to stage dive in Detroit, which had a like, like one in every three, one in every two or three people we had COVID. We found out COVID. after that. Yeah, we, we found out after. No, 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 no. We, we did not know. We did not know. But yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, hold on though. You, he did. He didn't just stage dive though. He oh, ran through the crowd yeah, up yeah. onto the balcony yes, and dived yes, yes. off the balcony. To, and Jesus and Jesus peaced out with a guitar dude, in his hand. To be and it was fucking legendary. To be fair. It was the it best was, way to catch COVID. It was 100% cool. worth it. You can't catch Minus COVID that. Minus for me. Yeah. Minus for yeah, me. I, mean, I, if, I was making anybody, out with Dan Kenny. If and, anybody talks trash to Garza, dude, I just tell him, listen, it was character building, dude. Getting COVID, <laughs> get, 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 getting COVID on tour is character building for sure. It, it, was, it, it, was, it was viral for a minute, and it was in a group chat that, uh, <laughs> that we're in. And I remember everybody in the group chat going, what an idiot. Like, doesn't he know COVID exists? <laughs> <laughs> like, four days later, we're all sick as fuck. Yeah. 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 Hey, what are you supposed to do? When you're feeling it, you're feeling it, dude. Hey, dude you know yeah. what I mean? hey, whatever. Hey, we, we only missed, like, know. three shows. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, 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 and the, the sickest the, Thanksgiving spread ever. Oh, dude, the, yeah, well, yeah. Man, the, funny, dude. the funniest part was everybody trying to n- not say it was yeah. Garza's fault. We're trying <laughs> oh, to be no, nice it was about my it. Fault. No, no, no. It was, I did it. Everyone's no, no, trying to be no nice way. I know. There's I know, just I know, no way. It was guys. not Garza's fault at all. No way. But you know the, the craziest no part fault. about all of that too, though, is I spent almost all day on your guys' bandwagon in Brooklyn when you guys were all sick. Yep. Never got sick. I like went and got like well, a pedicure with Megan and they were all sick and I just didn't get it. I was like, okay. Yeah, you well, you were kicking it uh, uh, with yeah. me. Like you yeah. brought me breakfast that morning. From, yeah, from the bagel spot I, and all well, that stuff. I felt horrible. Well, yeah. Well, and you guys looked fucking terrible dude, too. And even I was like, <laughs> right, maybe they're hung up, you know, whatever. I was like, okay, it's it's tour lung, whatever. Dude, I was I, like, I everyone's just ha- shot and tired. It's a day off, they're trying to relax. <laughs> we get we yeah. roll five blocks to the venue in the morning and everyone's like, hey, uh, 
Uh, it just started trickling down. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Every, everyone in my camp was like, weren't you on their wagon all day yesterday? I was like, what? No. No, no you're not. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 they're not they're, they're not they're not my friends but we did like you know they, 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 they made you know the venue made us test or whatever and i was still there i was like all right cool yeah good, john man. douglas and james never got it either yeah they oh like, yeah they, they were so like weird. in our buttholes and they didn't catch it no uh, it, it was it was really weird it was literally just the band and our merch girl yeah that's because you know you know why james, you know why james lynch didn't catch it because he's not human dude he's <laughs> no, he's James doesn't catch it because he had it's because he's COVID been, like two weeks before. Oh yeah, that's also <laughs> true. Because he yeah. drinks, he drinks the Mexican water. He's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, seawater too. Not to mention, yeah, in the beautiful sandy beaches of Cozumel, <laughs> dude. Let's go, Cozumel. So yeah, then I, so like a, a week later, an article comes out on the internet that. Michigan was like this one in three people have COVID. <laughs> so it happened after. Yeah. And Garza, you jumped into about 15 people. So there's about six of those motherfuckers that had it. Yeah. yeah. That was more than 15 people. There, yeah. That was a packed ass the, show. Oh, yeah, you jumped, for sure. That place was to the rim. The I mean, the people from, that caught him from the balcony. Idiot. More and than you know, that. And you know, and you, know it, you know, it was one weird fan that like stuck their finger in his mouth, dude, while he oh, was yeah. just searching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just like, they're like, I can do it. Yeah, I gave him the old fish hook real quick, dude. God. Oh my God, well, guys, I'm sorry. If it was really me, I'm sorry. Dude. God. Blame it on Garza. 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 Garza, you became a Deicide song. How does that feel? Yeah, that's pretty sick. <laughs> He's like, Deicide's pretty tight, dude. Shout out Glenn, dude. But but you know what? To my credit, it felt it felt pretty normal because, I mean, that's when, I feel like, I mean, that tour was a while. We were gone for already four weeks. And you, you know, you get. Fatigue. You got a, run, a runny nose. That's that's already. what, that's like what I'm saying. Uh, like, it's like like you're yeah. sneezing. It's like um, it's like the tour cold. I feel and, I feel yeah. normal. Yeah. I, I feel normal out here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I should have been more responsible. I'm like, wait. And I should have. It's you, you know, know it's a it's a time of uncertainty. Whatever you just you, we're, you're you're fucking rolling the dice. We were also you know? we were it's all, also it's all for the, the love of rock and roll, dude. Yeah, we were also <laughs> the mindset of just like, dude, like. Get tested if you really feel like crap. Yeah. And really, the only two people that got it bad, bad were Mark and I. The only people. Well, Devin, Devin too. Oh, Devin okay, yeah, Devin. <laughs> but he got it, he got away like days after poor, all of us he, yeah. were already. Poor kid had so, a I mean, bunch of bugs in his bed. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I know. Yeah. I'll ne- I'll his do, room I'll, of ladybugs. Yeah, the room of death. Wow. I'll, dude, I'll <laughs> never, I'll so never weird. forget <laughs> when uh, we Facetimed. You and Devin. Yes. And Devin answered the phone, dude, and he looked fucking miserable. He was just like, <laughs> oh, we lost our minds. I he, don't even want to get into that. He looked so bummed. Oh, yeah. You're daily like, yeah, you want to go take a walk around the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> I just suck Should, dick. Dude, and, oh, not only that, but it's like taking a walk was a brutal experience. We had like, to do it. It yeah, was like, because it was getting winded just yeah. walking. It, it, <laughs> I, like, I still haven't fully hell? recovered. Brain fog, dude. I've had COVID like 15 times, dude. <laughs> <laughs> my, my fucking brain is mushed. I'm fucking dusted, dude. You're dusted. <laughs> you know, You're pretty I, dusted. I wonder if my, if my taste is actually is back. Or if Sweets like, don't taste as good to me anymore. Dude, I have not I had such smell. a sweet tooth anymore since COVID. I don't smell I mean, things uh, the same blessing way. Blessing and a curse. Yeah, I don't know. I, oh, man. He's fooling himself. Gar- Garza, Garza, Garza you've brutal. never had good taste, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 okay. I'm kidding. I love you, We're just going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the worst thing was not being able to taste, man. I, that wasn't the worst thing. It was up there. But when you have a, sh- a drink of a beer... and. A, you, you have to look at it to make sure it's not it says soda water. Yeah, because oh, all yeah. it just tastes like soda water. Then That's you have true. a shot of tequila. Can't even taste that at all. That's so weird. And then That's you're like, like <laughs> all right, this is gonna be trouble. Okay, we all know the best part what? is sleeping all day. Close. <laughs> okay, love that. I love sleeping. Okay, when you're taking a shit, you know, smell it. They're like, oh my, my shit don't uh, smell anymore. No. Okay, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm, I, 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 wow! What? So, oh wait, I have a COVID. I can't smell anything. <laughs> you think your shit don't stink? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, I got news for you. Oh, so <laughs> check does. this. When we were in that hotel, though, we weren't really there, supposed to be like seeking quarantine at a hotel. No, like, definitely not. We were hiding out, being really respectful, and not, you know, being out. But like Megan, our merch girl, smoked cigarettes, and she wasn't really that sick, but she did lose her sense of smell. She went outside to smoke a cigarette while there was like a skunk that had just skunked, and oh. everyone that was working at the hotel was like. You know, oh, it's fucking disgusting out there. And Megan's just out there smoking a cigarette, like not giving a shit. And everyone's oh, just like, yeah, how, how do you skunk like, out there? Yeah, like I forgot, I forgot <laughs> about the like, COVID skunk. It blew our cover. They were like, <laughs> they're like, oh, these people definitely got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, there's like a skunk oh, problem outside our, our rooms. I couldn't smell, so I couldn't smell it either. <laughs> smell. I'm gonna go get a beer. Yeah, yeah you should. You should. I'm gonna go take a piss. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, it's and to not be able to taste Mexican food. That's that a travesty. That was devastating. It, ta- it, it tasted like steel. Yeah. Yeah, yo, that's everything tastes like you're chewing aluminum foil when, when yeah. you have COVID. It's fucked up. I just ate plain ass white rice because it does have that much taste <laughs> anyways. So you're just like, getting all your nutrients at the yeah. very least. You're like <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Also, that just was a fucking crazy long tour. Dude. It was eight and a half weeks. Okay, I'm Stone Cold Beer, dude. Oh damn, Stone that's right, dude. Awesome. Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking hell about. Yeah. What? <laughs> you, can't, you, you can't do an eight week long tour and not expect to get COVID. Yeah, at that point, it's, it's, like, a, it's, it's like a numbers it's, game. You're literally geez. rolling the dice. N- who's going to be out almost nine weeks and not come in contact with somebody? You it's, know what I mean? It's Even possible. So, that's what I'm saying. It, like, so our, this show this show coming up that we're doing for New York, they haven't seen us in a really long time. True. Oh, yeah. 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 That. That's, that's right. Because, yeah. You get, you guys I was the dad of the band for sure. Before that tour, I was like, dude, we're all going to get sick. You know, like yeah. my cousin is an infectious <laughs> disease specialist. So like I just go straight to this girl who like knows everything about everything. And she's just like, it's not an if and when. It's not if, it's when. Telling yeah. me like yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. are foolish to think you guys are going to be able to finish that tour without getting COVID. You're yeah. going to go into a room with a thousand to two thousand people a, a fucking day. Totally. Like you're you're guaranteed uh-huh. everyone's going to get sick. And I kept saying it to everybody. I'm like, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, for, and it, it was yeah. tight as fuck, though, for that first month. It was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it was totally, totally it's totally worth it. If it, it was fucking worth it as fuck. It was a great tour. If yeah, it was a normal fun. like four week long tour, we would came home. Without it. Probably without it. But, but then we probably would have got it again, somehow. Oh, yeah, of course. From some, it, like, like of course. last two days of tour, someone walks by and sneezes on you or something. But you did, after you have it, you do feel kind of invincible. Like, hey, I already had it. Fuck you guys, you know? Yeah, hey, it's all, it's all hang out. <laughs> Let's all hang well, out. And, and right now, like, we're about to leave for Chaos and Carnage. I was hoping that I had COVID because I just got exposed last week and I had to sit at my house for five days and wait to get tested to make sure I didn't have it. I was hoping that I had it. So, like, oh, I'm going to go out on tour and just already ha- have it and, and just not have worry the... about getting it again. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, ha- he'd have the, 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 the fucking the natural immunity on roids, dude, from how many I, times he's had it. I probably <laughs> already have it. I didn't get it. So you're, I like, my, you're, my... Like, you're like fucking Bubble Boy, dude. You've had COVID 15 times. You just don't have you're any immunity boy. whatsoever. Dude, yeah, dude. <laughs> Fuck COVID. Dude, I ain't scared, dude. I ain't fucking scared. I, w- I wonder how it is now. It's not in the news really at all anymore. I'll tell you that. Uh, well, would it? Would it? Uh, remember, we were talking about this the other day or yesterday, I think. Yeah, I think like, it what is. It's, it's what it seems like it's like shifted into. Like I, I uh, watched. Uh, I, I don't, I don't actively watch it, but I caught like a news piece where they were talking about an, another mutated strain. Hmm. But even the news was like at this point where uh, they they were saying like. We're no longer in a pandemic. We're in an endemic, and this is just going to be around. And basically, by this time next year or something like that, anyone that like catches it, it's going to be like a mild cold. Yeah. It's a and, hoax, dude. You know, it's not even like, real. It's not even <laughs> fucking <laughs> real. Endemic, I, ivermectin, I, yeah. and shit, whatever. Endemic. Yeah. All the buzzwords. That's that's the know. that's that's the term they were that's using. That's a metal ass word. <laughs> endemic. Endemic. That's a great the, great album that's title. That's the name of the next record, yeah, dude. dude. Endemic. All right, well, yeah, it's kind of sick, boy. Your last record, dude. Next record, endemic. That's it. So we're announcing our our last record right now. So new record, last one, endemic. Twenty twenty four, endemic, dude. Fuck. There you go. What do you got in there, dude? Oh, uh, this is a little DJ. A little DJ. <laughs> a little Don Who. Oh, 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 so it's that it's that Jesus juice. That Jesus juice in the corn shot glass. You hey, know? look at it closely before you take it. Hey, look at it closely. <laughs> I had about five hundred of those this weekend. <laughs> we know, Nick. And <laughs> oh, I know. We can tell by your text messages in the group chat. Five hundred. I don't, don't even judge believe. It. I don't even. Hey believe guys, five hundred. Five thousand. Five thousand. At right. least dude, five thousand. P bag punishment, dude. They're fucking. <laughs> our record's gonna sound easily as good as them, dude. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> I, I bought a shirt of them. <laughs> P-bag, okay, so P-bag is, punishment, dude. is anal epilepsy a movie or a band? It's a band. Oh, it's a band, dude. It's heavy, as, he- heavy as fuck. Oh, because because tight. you made you made it sound like a a band. That you made cool. it sound like, like oh, a movie. Is a sick I was, yeah, it's kind of. But he's pre- he's, cool. at, he's pronouncing it wrong. It's analepsy, dude. Whoops. Yeah, oh. Anna's a first name. Lepsy is a last name, dude. I was shit for Anna. Analepsy, dude. You guys know Anna, right? Lepsy. She's a lepsy, not a right name. Analepsy. Oh my gosh. No, Dan oh Kenny is in like multiple group chats, and oh I just God. see him get confused, mistaking <laughs> like who he's talking to, and I'm like, Dan Kenny, you're talking to the wrong people about the wrong shit. Like you're, you don't even notice it. Just <laughs> to Dan Kenny right here, dude. I, did, I, had, way, to I had way too much. Cheers. 
Cheers to Dan Kenny. Dan Kenny. Let's Dan go. To, D, to Dan the Dan Man Kenny. To kick ass. DK kick ass, dude. Dank, let's go. The dankest of Kenny's. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor called. <laughs> Taylor called Dan Kenny the band clown. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I mean, that's not, I mean, I, it's, it's like kind of it. true. It's like, you know, you're entertaining hey, us Steve, all the time. Steve O was a clown. He is. Cool. And, and he's, he's real successful and, and cool, he, you know? And he's yeah. badass, too. Yeah. <laughs> Krusty the clown. He's way more handsome than you. John, Wayne. Oh, oh, oh. John Wayne Gacy was a clown. <laughs> Doink the clown. <laughs> Doink. Yeah, Doink the clown. Oh, Doink. Was, was Doink gay? Uh, he's... Probably. He was, wasn't he? <laughs> he got know. definitely gets he... doinked in the back. <laughs> <Was he laughs> slurking? If you're talking about Doink the Clown, the wrestler, there was like six different doinks. Oh, no, no shit. It always changed like every couple years to a different guy. I just wonder if he was the first it. gay wrestler or not. No, no. There's... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Well, there was... He was sure he clowns around. <laughs> Wait, so... <laughs> that was impressive. See? See what I mean? There, there you go, dude. <laughs> so, wait, so his he was a wrestler for a while, but but his character changed? No, his character stayed the same, but it's that, the person who played him was different. Really? Yeah. There's like, that's like four different ones. There's two Undertakers, too. Well, the other, no. the other Undertaker was just some the, dude who like kind of looked like him, and they made him Undertaker versus Undertaker, mm-hmm. which is just a silly match. They're probably running out of ideas for him. Okay, so was Kane the same guy? Kane has always been the same guy. Always been the same Before guy. he was Kane, he was Isaac Yake of DDS. He was a dentist wrestler. Oh, There's a wow. big conspiracy. I remember when I was young, it was like it used to be, oh, Kane was the original Undertaker. Uh, no. I know, I know. Yeah, I remember like you, I used to think that was true because Undertaker used to be kind of chubby. So he used to look way yeah. different. And then all of a sudden, Undertaker became the American badass and he looked totally different. <laughs> Completely different. And I was just like, that's not the same fucking guy. American badass. That was my email address. No, American Badass 909 at I, <laughs> I, I couldn't stand that gimmick, dude. Oh, dude, come he, on. It was, it was, he went from like the dead man all brutal to, hey, I'm some biker guy now. Yeah, I'm some biker, dude. It's like, boo, go kill people. Dude, my socks even, were even so like high, a biker. living in the IE. You know, <laughs> I wanted a motorcycle. I was too poor. I, was, I, I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Mark was sock checking fools before sock check oh, was a thing, bro. He, he's been wearing the high socks, dude. Oh, they, yeah. they, they've gone down a little bit. You know, they probably used to be up here. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I mean? This is a really nice table, Garza. <laughs> <laughs> this table was 30 bucks, dude. What? Let's yeah. go. I, I waited for months outside of a Bob's uh, outlet. I'm Wait, for seriously? This, this particular style, I was waiting for months for this to go in, in the outlet. Because this is normally like 600 bucks. Yeah, you yeah, got this I, for 30 well, I mean, yeah, bucks? $30 is insane. What yeah. The fuck? I yeah. waited. I, uh, like a week before the Ashley podcast, I was yeah. like, I need, need that table. I might buy it new. I was like tripping. I'm like, Jeez. then. And then, I, 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 then I, I, I went in Bob's and boom, there it was. Finally. Fuck yeah. Wait, was it like a parking lot deal or something like that? Or they were just like, we're blowing it out because it is just. Like, Bob's? Bob's furniture. Of- I, 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 know, I know what they are. Like, I know they like, it's like discount furniture or whatever have you, but like. Yeah. I mean, it's not cheap stuff. Like, it's a, it's no, a, fucking, they have, it's a fucking nice uh, table. Like. Not, not all of them, which I found out, but uh, a few of them have outlets. And in, in the back, so you go in the back, there's like beat up kind of furniture, and it's all dope, cool, cool yeah, stuff. Shit. But now it's different. Uh, the past few months, I just went there to, out of curiosity, yeah. and now all the prices, <laughs> even in the outlet, are fucking. Yeah, it's because they realized they gave Garza a thirty dollar table, and they were like, "Damn, we <laughs> fucked up, dude." Everything's fucking up there. You dude. know what, dude? I take it back. You're not shot anymore, dude. dude what did you do, Bob? <laughs> that was a twelve hundred dollar table. Thirty dollars. What the hell? Also, fun fact, going back to that whole, like, Kane Undertaker thing. You know Kane is the <laughs> mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee? Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Yeah. No, seriously. Dope. No, he's not. Yeah, oh, he is. man. Am I... Is he really? Yeah, yeah. Alex Wade. Okay. And Phil. Yeah, Al- 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 Alex, himself. Alex Wade and Phil were like, yo, you guys, you know that he's the mayor of Knoxville? His name's Glenn. Fuck, His Glenjamin? Real- His name's fucking Glenjamin. <laughs> Glenjamin, <dude. laughs> Glenjamin, <dude. laughs> Glenjamin Glutton. Dude. Glenjamin is fucking Kane. Oh, yeah, God. I don't even remember how we got on the subject of it. We were over like when I was you know jamming dude. with him or whatever, and he we, t- we were talking about wrestling or some shit, and he was like, yeah, he's like, you know, Kane is the mayor of Knoxville, and I was like, That's wait, like the wrestler? Man. He's like, yeah, his real Jesus name's Glenn, and he's the mayor of Knoxville. I was like, <laughs> real name is Glenn. Yeah, Glenn. I hate that. <laughs> I hate I everything hate about that, that too. I fucking dude. hate that. Fuck I don't know you, Knoxville. <laughs> I don't know. Glenn Benton's pretty hard, dude. Glenn Glenn Blenton Benton. Gen, Gen Blenton <laughs> gives, gives somebody's drinking tequila over there. Oh, man, man, I've had a tequila or two. Y'all know Blen Genton, right, dude? That guy's sick. That's a mayor, like me, dude. The mayor of Hades. Blame it on Garza. <laughs> oh, Blame it on God. me, dude. It all, it all comes for full circle, dude. It does. It does. Ernie, you are gearing uh, up to uh, play your first official show with us. Yeah. Pretty cool. Less, yeah. less than a week away. In Sacramento, California. Yeah, dude. Twist today's month. Yeah. Four days, five days. 
Sacramento 40s. sold out. Sold out Ace of Spades. Gonna be a good time. Lots of friends, lots of homies. Just a yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy time we're living in. You know what I mean? How are you feeling? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous, but I feel good, especially after today's rehearsal. Yeah. It's for, uh, uh, officially our first time jamming as a whole group yep. today outside of the recording, playing mm-hmm. songs that I've never played before. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. I went into it a little wary and came out with a couple of blood blisters and uh, feeling way better about myself. I'm like, okay, we're good. We're gonna be all right. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really good. I, I, Took it from a semi to a full boner. You know, yeah, I didn't quite yeah. go from six to midnight right away. I went from like six to like eight. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then once we were done, I was like, all right, it's midnight. We're good. Yeah. We're chilling. <laughs> you know, you, you midnight, come a long Jesus. way, Ernie. Like you, uh, even when you weren't in bands or you were filling in for for Whitechapel for those two uh, two year plus. Yeah, and like you yeah. were still. Like spending your money, like uh, getting rehearsal spots, playing drums, practicing Grinding, drums, dude. like Grinding. still, dude. I and and that's a uh, that's all. It's all part of the trip, dude. It's all part of you know getting uh, you know to where you want to be. You're gonna get out of this kind of career what you want to get out of it with the, with the time and effort you put in. You you get back what you put into it. I firmly believe that. Um, yeah, I I th- I don't think that I would be doing the things I'm doing if I didn't put that kind of work in, or you know, make the sacrifices early on of you know, yeah, working eight thousand different fucking jobs just to make enough money to afford gear and be able to take time off and go play shows and 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 do stuff like that, you know, to get to get to you know to a point where I am now. And I and I know for some people they've been doing it longer than I have. They got you know their start. I don't I don't want to say. Well, I guess yeah, sooner. You know what I mean? In terms of like, you know, being in a full time touring band a lot, a lot younger. It didn't really happen for me until like, you know, my middle to late 20s and stuff like that. But I'm actually really like happy that it happened that way for me and like in trajectory. I don't know that I'd be able to handle that kind of thing in my like earlier in my earlier true. years. Because then, you know, then you join, then you start jamming with dudes like us who are jaded and <laughs> shot. <laughs> and we've, we've, we've done it all already and we're like, we want more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, me, I, I need cake before I go to bed. Right? <laughs> okay. That's true. But but no, it's uh it's um it's it's truly a, a crazy thing due to the trajectory and, and the places that music has taken me. You know, <sighs> I, I, I there were definitely times where I was like, man, like this is this is a grind. And I knew that going into it. When I dropped out of high school, you know, fucking almost 20 years ago now. God, wow. we're fucking old. Yeah. Um it, it was one of those things where I was like, you know, I don't I don't really I don't want to do anything else but music and I'll figure out a way to make sure that I can do that and and make it work regardless of what I got to do to get there. You know what I mean? So, you know, when I think about like the time and the money spent and all that stuff. None, I don't regret any of it. You know, I've put myself in debt many a times, gotten myself out of debt, but it's never been a thing where I was like, I'm I'm spiteful as shitty because I did all this and nothing is paid off for me. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I knew eventually something would have to give because I, you know, I put myself in front of enough people and, and faces and ears. Eventually someone would be like, damn, this guy is a hard worker and he's <clears throat> sick and doing his thing. Like, let's see what he's about. And I've, uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I've spent a lot of time climbing the proverbial ladder or whatever you want to call it, you know. But I always stay hungry. Like I just want to always fucking be as the the best version of myself as a human and a drummer as I as I always can be. And I feel like you're always learning, you're always improving. And like the mo- the moment that you stop doing that or you get complacent or comfortable with yourself, you'll start to regress or just kind of walk in place. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. But I'm I'm very excited for where I am right now and the things we're about to do and the record on our hands, the the tours we have coming up and stuff like that. Chaos and Carnage is gonna be insane. Almost the entire thing is almost sold out, which is unreal. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think uh, this the the rest of this year is gonna be a really wild, productive, busy one, and I'm looking looking forward to every day. So you know, there's a lot of a lot of amazing things you said there because a lot of people bank on the fact that you have to get to where you're supposed to be young, you know, especially in the entertainment industry. Yeah. And, you know, sports also has that same kind of deal where it's like there's an expiration date. There's, we're a, like, there's we're a shelf af- life. We're athletes, you know what I mean? And the, there's yes. an expiration date to where you can write, you know, sick music that's going to affect an age range and be able to resonate and, you know, blah, blah, blah here and there with music. Yeah. But... One of the things that you said is like 
if you do keep up on your hustle and grind and you don't you know you don't lose focus of the fact that yeah you're there for the for the music you're there to be the best player that you can be to be the best writer whatever artistic you know outlet you have within you know the the, yeah. the music as long as you're doing that and keeping to it being consistent with it that there is an avenue there is an an opening there is a window that you can find no matter what age you're at and Absolutely. that's 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 huge because yeah. you know especially for like Mark was saying it's like to, for dudes like us we're at an age already where it's like yeah we've done it but it's also like have we done it? You know, like, yeah. have we gotten to where we wanted to be when it, we were imagining these things? You know? exa- like, exactly. Have we gotten yeah. that high that we were supposed to get? Yes, we have, but also we don't, you're still chasing it. So, yeah. And, and there's, it's easy to get jaded within that. And absolutely. And it's, it's, it's good to see that because there are kids out there right now that are so thirsty for this. That's the biggest thing. It's like so hungry, so thirsty for this. They're, they're killing themselves, going into debt, you know, Making their parents go into debt. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I playing, did, I did playing, all <laughs> playing on, you know, whatever they can figure out to jam with their buddies. That right there goes a long way. And if you are doing that right now, keep going. Yeah. Because this Absol- is what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, and that's, you know, any, any, any time that I've gotten the opportunity to talk to, a, you know, a younger kid or someone who's getting into music and stuff like that, even even at, as my time as a fill-in with other bands and stuff like that and being on tour and having, you know, fans or, you know, kids alike being like, hey, you know, think you're a great drummer. That's, you know, awesome to see you, you know, touring with these guys and whatnot. You know, and I've had kids ask, like, you know, like, what, you know, what do you, what's your advice? What, you know, what do you tell someone that's like, you know, getting into music or wants to start a band, you know? And, uh, you know, I know some people would give, I mean, everyone's going to answer that question differently, you know, based on their own experiences, you know what I mean? But uh, I've, I've always just felt like, you know, being very, like, brutally honest about it, it's like, hey, it's it's definitely not a job, career, or lifestyle that most people are going to be able to hack. The, the thought of it looks awesome on TV and on the internet when, yeah. when people are like, damn, look at these guys playing these big-ass shows and you know, signing autographs and all stuff, and that shit is fantastic, and that's awesome, but that's that's about this much of it by yeah. comparison to everything else you don't see behind the curtain or behind the door of, uh, you know, struggling to stay afloat, you know, paying bills, jumping from job to job to maintain, being able to leave and come back. You know, a lot of places, you know, I've done that forever. You leave from a job to go on tour, you come back, they ain't going to have you, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Doing stuff like that, so I talk, I'm very honest about. It. I'm like, Dude, hey, it's, it's 2022. It's, you got to have podcasts. You got to have a stream. You got to, you got, you, you got to diversify, diversify your bonds. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you gotta diversify your bonds. it's like, it, it, it just, it isn't. But, yeah, you know, the grind is not creating a record and then putting it out there and then going on tour. That's no. not the grind. The grind is the 48 sleepless hours that you're putting in to get to the point where you can maybe have a show for five people. Ex- like, ex- exactly. <clears throat> that's, the, that's the shit that people don't talk about, uh, the, don't glamorize, don't yeah. don't make sick. Like, it's all, but it's, that's the it, sickest part. It is. And it's yeah. all, and it is like, especially in this day and age, in the age of like social media and all that stuff, it's a, it's a lot of a, what's the term? Like smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything looks awesome on your phone screen here yeah, when you're scrolling sure. and double tapping on a phone. Mm-hmm. You know, but 90% of those kids don't know what it took to get to that point or what goes on the other 23 hours of the day except for that one hour that you're on stage looking cool and badass it's like dude you know you're sitting around you're waiting you're in parking lots you're taking poops at walmart and shit like that you know what i mean like (laughs) but i wouldn't have it any other way you know what i mean whether it be in a van bandwagon or a bus or whatever it's just you you constantly stay grinding because you're gonna get out of it what you want to get what you what you put in yeah what you you know you know you're gonna be the best form of yourself that you want to be exactly and i feel as long as that's you keep that kind of mentality and you stay sharp up here, everything else will follow. Like that's, I've always felt that way. I I've got a, <clears throat> I accredit most of that to my grandpa. Who's going to be 101 in August. He's still oh, going. Wow. Killing it. Still 101. Still tequila killing every morning. Still takes a shot at tequila every morning. <clears throat> swears it keeps him alive. I believe him. Boom. Shout out to and DJ. right there. Shout out dude. <laughs> Julio. Is his Don. name Don Julio? <laughs> it is not. No, it's, Don, it's, it's actually, it's Don Epi. Don Epi. <laughs> it is. But he, so he's the creator close. of the Epi pen. Just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I wanted to talk about, so like I said that, you know, we're all jaded and all that, which I, I, I recognize the way that we have been at this for, 
close to 20 years now and and Ernie has been at this in a different compa- capacity than us and having him involved and seeing the way that he operates it's it brings a new life and a new fire that it's not that we lack the fire it's that where we are jaded is that we are so used to all of the monotony and all of this shit that we can fucking say fuck that stupid shit because we're so tired of it. We joke about it like it's it's part of our regular life. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. But when we start working with someone like Ernie, who is so stoked to write music, and we that is where we are not jaded. Where yeah. where it's like well, the only reason why we're doing this is because it's, it's like music. we want to fucking create yeah. something. Yeah, sure. you know. Yeah. So like the creation of things is where like. You know, all the jaded bullshit goes so far out the window. And, you know, we talked about it on the drive after we finished the record. Yeah. And I, we, we finished, we were driving. It was it was kind of a weird little, like, end of the record. What do we do? The record's done. All right, Ernie, <laughs> you know, hey, can you give me a ride here? I'm like, sure, all right. So we're talking about it. But it's like, you know, with what, what you brought to the album was a lot of realization and, like, a lot of... Uh, a lot of, you know, we put... I know we pushed ourselves, like, way harder, I think, also, because it's like, we know... You know, this is going to be, you know, someone's, everyone's going to look at, there's a new drummer, you know, there's somebody that has been, that wasn't, that was involved with the band for so long that isn't. And I know we all pushed ourselves in a way that like probably wouldn't have happened if, if it was, you know, the other way around, which we all know what we're talking about. But, um, (laughs) but, um, which, yeah, shout out Alex, you know, we all love Alex, you know, but this, this process, this process was some, was some, was full of learning experiences which maybe we're here right now to, to discuss which maybe we didn't really talk about you know while we, while it was happening but like yeah dude you know the the fact that we all are doing this in whatever capacities we have and we yeah. still like fucking get so much joy out of sitting in a tiny little fucking studio, either this, talking about it, or in yeah. the studio grinding out guitar tracks or doing drums or whatever. Like, yeah. it was so it was so much fun. And, like, yeah, like, you killed it. And we I think we all learned a lot about, you know, what we're doing and why we're doing it, I think, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and everybody, I think, surprised each other with what we could do and needed to, to do on this yeah. record. Yep. And, yeah, and, and, what was, Absolutely. and what was, a you know, created out of it, for sure. Like, totally. it, you know... That that I think is like a, a real good like uh, explanation of it. Like I think you know, myself included too. Like not just me, but everyone involved. It was like shit. Okay, like damn. But you know I, how many times after like piecing a song together, you know whether it was one that was already you know kind of already in construction or one that we wrote from the ground up or whatever, where it was like, oh, all right, like it come together. You know, we'd sit on it for a day, then come back and play it the next day and be like, damn, shit, okay, this is, like, sick. How can we bank on this and make this even sicker? And then, I, you know, I really feel like just the the process in general of, you know, obviously, you know, having someone new in the group and, you know, uh, with a different style of drumming and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then getting this weird, like, trifecta of, like, working with Taylor and him being really proficient and sick at what he does just made made the process, like enjoyable i know that super sounds enjoyable. dumb but it's just like it really like it, super enjoyable some some bands it, it, they look at writing music like a fucking task like they're like oh we gotta go write another fucking record for the label or whatever and it's like it's true you know what i mean and i i, yeah. I understand for some people yeah you can you can be jaded by that because you've done it so many times and you know the process and it's just like you go into this autopilot thing of being like okay let's go sit down in a room hammer out 12 of whatever we have to a do lot of to... people have music written for them and that and that, that, and that is too. a super taxing thing it, yeah it, it, and that's and that's taxing. crazy to me too like yeah. I, I mean hey listen everyone we does things differently we, we won't name band names but a lot of bands that you love don't write their own songs yes and, and, that's, and, and, that's, and, that's, uh, and that's the thing is what's fun and what keeps us not jaded at the writing is the fact that we do write together and we yeah. do sit in a room bang our heads together and come up with the best wow. possible you know, thing. It's uh, it, it's yeah. it, it, that I, is the beauty of I, it. I know. If, if you, I, wanted, like I wanted to say this earlier. You were talking about like, sorry to cut you off, Dan. Kidding. Sorry. It's like you were talking about. Oh, when I go into six oh six, it's like who's recorded here, who's done this. It's like that all matters so much, and like this builds this like anticipation to create something where you're going to be doing it. But like while you're writing, while I'm writing, I'm always thinking about the relationship of like how I feel towards the music while I'm doing it because mm-hmm. it is going to exist 
forever. Yes. And some of this I'm going to play on stage for probably the rest of my fucking life. Yeah. And yeah. I better enjoy the fuck out of it. And, and also <laughs> yeah. learning from all you guys, like that you guys better enjoy it either as much or close to as yeah. I am, or else we're all not going to play that song live. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and that goes for every instrument in the yeah, band. 100%. You know, like you, when you write to the parts that are written, you have to love it because that's what's going to, you, you're going to write more in the pocket, you know, when you, when you, when you like the part, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're a part of it. W one thing that I wanted to say was one of the things that astounded me and really kind of, surprise the shit out of me it was we were pre we were pressed for time that was that was a huge thing and you know you don't hear these things ever you know unless you you read 50 interviews and you finally get the one snippet of somebody talking about the record you know uh, but we were really pressed you know the you know we went through the alex situation and that was in the middle of the record you know Pretty we had much. we had we just started writing when all of that happened so ultimately we had to bring in somebody new, brand, almost brand new-ish, in to start writing a full 11, 12 songs. Yeah. That happened in less in less than two months. Yeah, we, we, Be, did, we did it in six weeks. I, 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 kept, I, I literally kept count, dude. I was six like, weeks? Because you don't blink or sleep. I, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. All he does is rub I, his knees. I, I, do, I, I do sleep. No one ever sees me. It's really quick. Dude. I, don't rub his knees. I just rub my knees. I, I, kept saying it. I, I, kept saying, I kept saying it while we were while we were working on the record. I was like, we're, "This, we're not behind schedule. We're not ahead of schedule. We're right on You're right time. on. Time. We have no to the time tea. to spare. To the T, man. It was. Yeah. It, it, it it all fit in like a like a puzzle. Like it really did. The whole thing, start to finish, it all fit in like a puzzle. You know, my scheduling issues. Everybody's scheduling with to, with each other, writing and being ready for the studio and having enough songs that were fire, that were on, you know on point. Because it's you know nobody talks about the other. We have we have we're going to be releasing you know a certain amount of songs. Nobody talks about the other twenty songs that were not yeah, fully don't make the hashed cut, out. Yeah. That don't make the cut. Yeah. So it's like those yeah. were being hashed out during yeah the writing. So it's like that's the stuff that's really impressive because you you're going through easily forty songs. And then you're picking ten, maybe twelve, and running with that. And to be ready for that in a, a month and a half, which is what you said, six weeks. Yeah, six weeks. To be ready in six weeks, that's incredible. And that takes a lot of passion. That takes a lot of of this pre work that we've been talking about. Six yeah. weeks before we were in the studio, yeah. 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 So studio. Yeah. So ten weeks altogether. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For start, start to finish, which is. Insane for anybody, oh, yeah. Would, regardless of the uh, the caliber of like musicianship. That's you know, especially you know, putting a full length album together, mm -hmm. like you know, from start to finish, uh, on t on you know, uh, yeah, on top, like you said, on top of everything else that didn't make the yeah. cut or that you mm -hmm. know didn't get fully constructed. There's still pieces here and yep. there, like in the riff bank and all that stuff. It's um, yeah, dude, it's a it's a labor of love. It's a that. it you. I, I, a, a word yeah. that I throw around, you guys know, <clears throat> is is intention. Like whenever right. we're writing, it's like, well, what are we intending to do? Why mm. does this song exist? Why does this riff need to be here? Why is this here? Like I feel like mm. it was oddly enough, the intention was placed when we started, and we it was like I think it was like January twenty third. I kind of remember yes. this date. I remember yes, like we started January twenty third with you, and we were like, all right, we're gonna start on this date or whatever it was, March something, mm -hmm. and. I remember you saying like, "We're good, like we got this. We're gonna, we're like, we're we're gonna have this many songs or whatever." And I remember yeah. you saying it, and I remember being like, "I believe you," and yeah. I was like, "That's the intention right now. We're gonna get this done. We're gonna yeah. get there. We're gonna have everything we need to get done done. And, and we're gonna be there." Yeah, and it's did. like, boom, there it is. Like, say it into existence. Make yep. it fucking happen. That's, hey, that's <laughs> yeah. as cliche as that sounds. That whole speaking things into existence. Oh yeah, hundred percent believe that. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there. I, I've got I've got some some wild theories and shit that I won't even get into like right. uh, on camera. We can talk about it after, but I, that was something that freaked me out early on when I uh, when I first started like delving into like touring full time and all that stuff. Like I I was at a show years ago with a friend and I made a comment about about a certain about a certain group and just kind of 
willed it into existence, and it was really fucking weird the way it all came full circle. It's very strange. But I, you know, I said it. it to him, he probably thought I was joking. But at that point, I kind of knew the band that I was in at that point was coming to an end. Everyone in that group was like, hey, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, and we kind of want to, you know, go back to our regular jobs and do our, you know, secure thing. And I'm like, cool, that's fine. I was never one of those people that's like, oh, okay, well, if you're not in this with me, then get fucked or whatever. I'm like, yeah. oh. I supported him. I'm like, yo, you want to do that? Cool, do that. They were all very much like, cool, like, you're still going to do the music thing? Well, yeah, you know. I don't, I don't really, I don't really yeah. find myself being <laughs> super sick at anything else. Like, not that I'm fucking bad at anything, but it's just like, I don't want to do I don't want to do anything else but that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I knew I had to continue working regular jobs and side hustling to be able to afford and, and, you know, the ability to do music the way that I wanted to in the capacity that I wanted to. Um, but yeah, I made a joke while we were at a concert and he, he kind of looked at me and laughed and I was like, yeah, watch. Yeah. Like one day and I'll play drums in that band. And then, you know, fat, fast forward fucking six years later, hmm. I'm answering a phone call on the receiving end of that band being like, Hey, come play drums for us. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, sure. Damn. All right. Yeah. That's how it works. I, I feel like I damned myself with, with, with my intention <laughs> and, 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 it's, and it's actually like something I, it, 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 it made my like, you know, whatever spiritual beliefs or whatever the fuck, which, you know, are what they are. But when I was super young, I was, I, I remember being like, I want to, and it was, it was Red Hot Chili Peppers, it was Green Day, it was Soundgarden, it was Alice in Chains. It was like these these bands I was really into when I was a kid. Like I'm talking like first, second grade. And I'm like, I want to do what they're doing. I didn't even really know what they were doing meant. But I'm like, whatever I got to do to do that, yeah. I don't care if all <laughs> I if all the money I make is to pay for the roof above my head and my bills. I don't care if that's all that I make. That's what I want to do. And here I am, yeah. paying for the roof above my head <laughs> and all my bills. And yeah. that's all I'm doing. <laughs> so, you know, I always damn. look at it. It's like, damn, I really did this to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We, I, we all set the same intention. I said the same thing. I was like, all I want is to be able to cover my bills and be able to jam and rock for yeah. the rest of my life. Here I am. Here we I, are. I, the, the intention, the, the willing, that's all, everyone to some extent, understands that that's real. But when you see it happen, when you see things lock into place, yes. it's and, and you're like aware enough, you're self-aware enough to know yeah. that things are locking into place for you in that moment, it's it's something else. It's really nice. It's a, yeah, it's a wild thing. Yeah, watch, watching it like come to fruition in front of you, you're like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, like you yeah, you and feel then, blessed. But, yeah, and then on that same time, though, you all, that's also when you realize that you're like, your actual grind and hard work is paying off. You know what I mean? That it, like it wasn't in vain. It's not for nothing. You know what I mean? Because some people, I mean, yeah, some people would be like, damn, I've been at this forever and nothing's giving. I'm mm. just going to say fuck it and, and, you know, go get a nine to five or whatever. And I get it. I, I have friends that have done that too. We all have friends in the, in the business that have been like, yo, this ain't panning out for me. I'm going to go do something else. N- nothing against them, dude. More power to them. Like, hey, if if that's what's in the cards for you now and that's what you want to do, cool. I, I've just always yeah, just never wanted to fucking do anything else. I'm like, Dude, man. and that's where fucking yeah. mindset comes in. Yeah. Though we can go on a fucking long one on that, but it's yeah. like, how many of our friends do you talk to? Where it's like, oh, I haven't seen you on the road in a while. And it's like, oh, I got this job or I got this, and it just became the sacrifices didn't become worth it anymore. You know, it's just yeah. like, well, yeah. it's like yeah. you start looking at things like that, where it's like, well, what were you sacrificing? What were the sacrifices you were sacrificing? You know, or yeah. like, why were oh, you looking wow. at it that way? Yeah. You know. <clears throat> And yeah. yeah, hey man, yeah. priorities do change though. And that's yeah, one of course. thing they do. You know, like yeah. and and for certain people, you know, then you've seen it. You know, you've seen it in people that we've toured with. You know, and you know when, you know, they're they're down for the cause. They're you know driving your you know your van, your trailer, being there, your tour manager, your guitar tech, your everything, and then they they see a wall and they're like, oh well, I'd rather just go work in an office. And then you see them, you know, ten years down the line and. You know, they yeah. seem unhappy, you know what I mean? But the, th- the reality is that they would be absolutely miserable even being on the road because that's their mindset. That's their, For sure. That's their, mm-hmm. that's their, their position. It's, I'm not happy anywhere I'm going to be. So. Yeah. For sure. There's that too. They yeah. should just kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Wrote a song about it. Like, here, here it go. <laughs> and then you have people that... Uh, I see all the time uh, people that quit before it's time to quit. I forgot how many times I want I want to quit this band, but for some reason I don't know what it is. You just keep showing up. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either. <laughs> <laughs> he said, and then there's Dan Kenny, dude. You're fucking, <laughs> dude, you're fucking stuck with me, dude. Yeah, I know. You're, you're fucking, <laughs> it's fucked. It's I don't know fucked. what it is, dude. I, I mean, I, I love. 
I'm, I'm very lucky to be in a band with people that I enjoy being around that make me want to be a better person. And, and, you know, I mean, Mark, now Ernie, you, Eddie, and Danny, I mean, no matter what has happened in the past, like, you guys make me want to be a better person. And maybe that kind of maybe subconsciously maybe just keeps me here. I don't know. Yep. It's weird. It's it's all, it's, it, it's, it's, we talked about it, like, when you first came down and we had lunch, like, discussing, you know, yeah. me coming in or whatever. Um, yeah, we had a long-ass conversation, you know what I mean? That would have been great to have that conversation here on the podcast. That's, we had lunch that lasted like 20 minutes and then talked for like an hour and a half afterwards. But uh, uh, it, uh, it's the hungry mentality, dude. It, it, to mm. me, the, the it, like, I don't say the age thing doesn't fucking matter. I know some people that, you know, they'll put a roof over it and be like, well, no, you know, you're, you're older than this well, you're fucking shot. And it's like, I don't know. And I know this is like a corny analogy, but I mean, look at fucking Metallica. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those dudes are gonna do that shit till the wheels fall off, dude, and they'll be good at it. Yep. Till it's till it's time it's, to fucking hang it up, dude. It's like e- it's easy to be rich and shot, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's also hard to understand how much how self serving music is. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it, really like, like this is this is for uh, this is for uh, you know our even though we are in a band together, we still do this for ourselves individually. Yeah, ultimately. Yeah. So, like it's it's, yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to not get past that egotistical it, nature of it. But like, but, it, but here's the thing you, that, that's. That's a true and fucking factual statement. No one, that, no one that started a fucking band young was like, "I want to fucking do this so that I can impress people and fucking get chicks." Like, I get, 100%. I get that that's a thing, but that's not real, dude. No, mm. no one that sits in a garage with their homies and starts m- taking music seriously and wanting to write good songs and stuff like that was ever like, "I want to do this for the guts and the fucking glory." Of course, that comes with it, you know. If you if you become successful and all that shit, but you do it, you because... do it because you fucking you're stoked on it and you like. What you do, you like creating something. You want to put something together, and and make something. Uh, what's the word like? Like tangible. Mm-hmm. And in, yeah. and in our case, it's music. It's songs. It's uh, you know, it's it's art. <laughs> That's art, dude. Yeah. It, it's art. You know, it, uh, it, even even simpler. Yeah. You do it because the first time you put a group of notes together, it gave you that dopamine rush. Yep. Yeah. And then you got addicted to creating that and getting more fluid in your writing prowess and you yeah. wanted to become a better musician so you write more and you practice more it's it's a long long yeah. lasting living video game that yeah. we're playing 100% it's, yeah. what, it's one of the most and it, fulfilling and it, things on the planet dude. and it, there's endless roots you can take there's uh, you know what i mean that's well, that's ultimately why i'm yeah. in music there's multiple highs for sure yeah, well, yeah that, mm-hmm. like you get the high you get going on stage that's that's, that's a, like the biggest that's, biggest thing i'm into dude and some people like unreal. to surf i like to fucking rock out yeah yeah and it's that's unreal. that's a big one right yeah. there, dude. Like, tra- you know, transitioning from the garage to the small bars to the clubs to the big stages to big rooms, arenas, whatever have you. That and I know that's a that's like, like a cliche phrase. Every every person that's in a band knows that shit. There there is no kind of drug that'll ever make you fucking feel mm-hmm. that way when you're stepping on stage with fucking bubble guts and the curtains moving back or you know the lights are going down like. Don't forget the gig. That's dick. yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forget the yeah, gig, the gig dick. dick. <laughs> <laughs> I love that gig. But it's but that's that shit is true, dude. And that's the one time, uh, you know. Well, you know, that's the one time a day when you're you know doing what you do best that you can like music. You know, playing music has multiple like multiple purposes. Uh, you know, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, like the high you get from playing live on stage, and it doesn't doesn't matter. From the time I played my first show at like, even like backyard shows and yep. shit like that, you know what I mean? Like for ki- for kids that were fucking beating each other's asses, dude, in a Even backyard, just you know, for your own, it, yourself, in, it's a in, it's you know, a crazy, crazy, it's a crazy in, dopamine in the high dude. for the first time, yeah, it's, you know, or it, nail or nailing a song that exactly. you've been trying to learn. You're like, oh hell yeah, and then you're pumped, you know. You get all gig, that. You can get gig dick without he being at a gig. That's <laughs> crazy, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But you know, there's there's a there's something like crazy inherently satisfying about strumming the last note of your set on stage saying thank you very much we'll see you guys next time or whatever and walking off stage and just being like ah i left yeah. it all out there that's, dude. That's, and coming yeah. off stage and just that you feel it too you walk past the door jam of like walking off stage and like mm-hmm. cold air hits you and you're just like Whew. yeah you know what i mean that's a sick ass feeling that n- no heroin addict will ever experience no one who's doing blow yeah. or none of that shit yeah. like it you couldn't make a replacement. No, you can't. I, you can't. I never talk about that feeling of the feeling of getting off the stage. Yeah, yeah. like it's like, they're, and they're 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 both. It's they're, they're the, di- the, they're the one before going on stage and one coming after. Yeah, stage are different. 
Absolutely. <laughs> but, 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 the second but, one's a lot hotter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're both equally satisfying. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the the you know the feeling of walking up and That's, you know hearing kids go crazy when the fucking lights pop up and you know yep. hitting the first note of whatever song you're fucking playing and then the last note rolling off, getting off, you know throwing a pick out, hit handing somebody a fucking stick, dude, smacking a high five on the way off stage, like. Dude, How many farting for, on your bandmates? Farting you know, on your bandmates, dude. Hitting I them with that, that Dutch oven in the bandwagon, dude. Garza's is gonna be the first one. I'm giving you pink eye, dog. It's happening. But no, like that's that's a real fucking cool thing. That again, for as I know we talked about this too, like for as big as the scene is and all that shit, it's really not. When you really stop and think about the people that get to do what we do for a living. It's by comparison to the people mm-hmm. on the planet, dude. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking small percentage. Yep. And it's even wilder that we do something that leaves a lasting effect right. on people around the fucking world. And that ties into like him being like when you know when, when we're working on our craft and creating songs and writing an album and all that stuff, it is something that uh that I think about all the time. It's like, damn. Um you know, somebody somebody okay, like Kobe Bryant, you know, rest in peace or whatever, he that man left a fucking legacy behind. He'll be remembered forever as the GOAT. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? the music and albums that artists and musicians put out will be around for the rest of time. That shit will live long after we're fucking dust, yep. which is a real yeah. crazy and, and wild thing to think about that at some point we'll be considered a fucking oldies band, which yeah. is really weird. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, well, we're living in a time where we're all yeah. re- We're already, yeah. you know, the, you know, the, yeah. clen- the cleansing record is considered <laughs> fucking, it's, old school. It's, it's, death a, it's a classic deathcore record, dude. Yeah, it's a classic deathcore. I, heard, I heard somebody so say that strange. shit, and I was like, it's, that's well, weird. Hey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm still alive, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I might have been telling him uh, when we were at the B&B after like one of the tracking days or whatever, I was like, I forgot whose fucking car I was in. They were listening to the radio, <laughs> and it was on fucking K-Earth 101 on Oldies, and they were playing STP, and I was like, oh, wow. oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had to stop and check my pulse for a second. Yeah. I was like, wait, this is old now? Yeah. And I was like, that record came out in 1991. That was fucking 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, mom, and come pick me up. I'm scared. Fuck what, what, was, what was oldies in the 80s? Stuff from the 50s. Yeah. Same, I, same I, fucking, thing. I hate same thinking about thing, that. I know it's a very thing. real thing. Well, but, you, well, you got to think. Technology moves much faster. So oh, things, absolutely. Things, you know, from the 50s to the 80s sounded hella different. I mean, you you had, you know... You know, a myriad of, of of things that came out that helped the recording <laughs> yeah. to make musicians better. Yeah. So by the time the '80s rolled around, yeah. So now, you know, you listen to STP and you listen to the same butt rock bands that are out right now. They're sounding pretty similar because they had stuff that came out around the same time. So it's yeah. to, to us, it's even more. That, it's, but yeah, but it's a trip. think about it from the perspective of the, the you know the younger generation yeah. who doesn't who hadn't heard stuff recorded. The way SDP recorded, which yes. was to no click, everybody playing at the same time. The, yeah, it, you know, exactly. they're all sitting in these like big ass rooms. You know, the, what they're used to is stuff being re- a whole record being recorded by just Garza by himself it, on his computer, yeah. sounding perfect, edited, you yeah. know, sounding pristine. They so. recorded core at uh, at at uh, Third Encore. Oh no shit! Yeah, yeah. right across the street from where we did the virtual tour. Oh shit! All together in the same room. But in the, uh, the retro, room. the yep. t- the term retro though. You, who are you, you talking? Who are you talking about? Uh, STP. STP. Oh. Um, core, that album core. Um, I have no idea. It ha- Apple, it, Apple core. It was it, it was during the, uh, right, right around the Northridge earthquake too. I learned that while yeah. we were at the yeah. virtual tour. But oh, wow. no, that term retro. The term retro. I remember when I was in like middle school or whatever. Nah, shit, I was in elementary school. Like my my my, <laughs> my my cousin my cousin became like a hippie, you know? But in the fucking nineties. Yeah. You know? So like my whole family was What's like, oh a nineties hippie, wouldn't that just be a grudge? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, kinda. But like no, he was into whatever hippie shit. I don't fucking know. He was into like fucking the shit you're into now. <laughs> <laughs> he li- he listened to the spin doctors you know? for sure. Damn. But I remember the term <laughs> retro, learning the term retro, and then I remember once we we got involved in the music industry. And like we were talking about corn and slipknot and and like you know band and deftones that were like from the early nineties. I was realizing I was like, wait, no, like now those bands are retro. Yeah. Like yeah. those are the retro yes. bands. No. Like for yeah. our 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 world. Dude, Deftones has been a band since eighty eight. That's weird. Super weird. Super weird. <laughs> Yeah, so so not, is, not so, but, hey, so is <laughs> Damn, flow. You know, fucking morbid angel, dude. Yeah, eighty eight, dude. 
Was, oh, yeah. boarded. I was three. <laughs> I, I was three, and they were blast beating. Dude, aborted started in like '98, right? Aborted's pretty old. Shout out aborted. <laughs> shout out aborted, dude. About aborted though, the the when I I didn't even get the Suicide Silence gig. Um, I tried out for the band, and then you guys gave me a CD. We were like, learn these songs, and it was you guys playing at the showcase. And uh, and I remember it was Mitch going like, "Give it up for Aborted." They were the headline. They were the headliner. Oh so yeah! I, like I'll never forget that. Like Damn. I learned Suicide Sounds music from a live <laughs> at the showcase opening for Aborted. <laughs> wow! <laughs> live set, which Sick. was pretty pretty fucking cool. What year was Sick. that? Like two thousand five? Two thousand? Yeah, it was two thousand five. I think the show that you guys gave me was probably from that year. I would imagine yeah. two thousand five. Damn! Yeah, Cormac Gordon yeah. just dropped too. Yeah, and right. we're we're every, that was a, that was a hype record, dude. Yeah, dude. That record was still. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that's still a hype record. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's the sick ass the sick ass title. Gormageddon. Gormageddon. Gormageddon God, damn. <laughs> Fuck. It's the new burger at McDonald's. The Gormageddon. <laughs> oh my god. I'm loving it. <sighs> should should, <laughs> should we just uh, tell the corn guys to call their next record Corn Mageddon? Corn Mageddon. Just every band, just everyone just make a fucking Yo. slipknot, slipknot Mageddon. Slipknot Mageddon. <laughs> what about, what like about a spaghetti dish? What about what about Horn Mageddon, dude? <laughs> Horn Mageddon. It's happening. That's guys. uh that's my great uncle on my mother's side. <laughs> that's a ho- old Horn Mageddon. <laughs> Boy, I'm oh hungry. My <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I had that uh Sprouts has his like vegan buffalo I've pasta. Why to try that? So good, man. I had that before I came here. Probably not enough. But Probably not enough. I wanted like a burrito. Of course it's the classic. Right Where's Santa yeah. Ana right now, right? Yeah, yeah, bro. You, a, you, we're, 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 four, we're four minutes from there's fire. A, there's an B&G Albert Tacos burritos, yeah. California burrito calling my name. Everything. Everything. Dang, dude. You know what's crazy? After so long, uh, Mark was talking earlier about, like, your intention. It's, it's crazy, like, we're st- I'm still living it. Like, like my, I, like my, my it? first show was seeing Corn Rob, Rob a Zombie in 99. And seeing Corn, I'm like, I want to tour with them. I have to. Out of any means necessary. And you made it happen. It's weird. It's weird. Look, I, it's it's weird that tour that we did. Uh, what what year was that? I always forget if it was twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Twenty fifteen. Yeah. yeah okay. That, I was like, I forgot. Like that that tour happened, and it means more now now than when the tour is happening because that tour was kind of a blur. I don't know what it was. It was like it was too much. It's like I mean, you're you're like talking like a life goal, a life goal for the band as a in in the visuals. It's and then like. For that to happen after Mitch was still like a big like, what like, like what the fuck? To, 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 and the timing of you Eddie and like the, the way things has happened and then the tour to happen and then you're you know you're seeing Monkey walk, walk by you're like whoa he's like a real person. Yeah. Yeah. Holy! <laughs> shit. I think the reason why that whole tour was such a blur is because we were all knew we were about to jump off a bridge. Not true. Like we all knew yeah. that we were about to go work on a record that we knew it was a dive into the unknown. Yeah, that's and, true. And it was kind of like everything that was happening at the time, we were already preparing so much to just fucking do whatever the fuck we wanted and not give a fuck. Garza, you and I yeah. were waking up every day at the crack of dawn, going for hit, like, H-I-I-T sprints, then doing about an hour of yoga. I forgot about that. Before going to lunch. <laughs> this was every day on tour. We'd have Monkey walking by being like, damn, you young bucks. And we were like, we're just trying to stay young bucks because we were, we knew what the next thing was coming. And we knew that we had to be mentally like yeah. ready. So that's for me, that's why that tour. But ultimately, I spent every day of that tour feeling like a kid. Like I... Yeah, same. I was very much yeah. in the moment in those days. It's awesome, and it's, it was something that, man, I'm so grateful that that happened in my life. It was, it's, it was almost to the almost to the to twenty year date of when I saw Corn doing issues, you know, releasing issues and putting that out and playing at the Oakland Arena. You know, that was huge for me. And seeing them, st- I stood out in line from like noon. Till when I left at midnight, you know, got picked up, and to be playing, you know, the, with a band of that caliber, and to be out there and putting w- what at the time was 
some of the best live performances I've ever done. You know, I mean, I was I was aiming for something that was further than I needed to aim. You know, just because, just because I wanted, I, I was always striving. I'm always going to strive to be the best. I want to be the best. You, you know, were, regardless, you, were, you of, weren't just lifting to live, bro. No, I was not <laughs> lifting to live, dude. I was looking at it closely, very closely. That's all. It, that's all it comes down to. Bitch ass parasite. <laughs> Bitch ass parasite. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I think that I, I really though also living that tour like we were kids is also why I don't. It feels like yeah. <laughs> yeah. facts. <laughs> yeah, back like what happened? <laughs> I, I think I was sober as shit on that tour. Honestly, I think I just smoked weed. Yeah, what a, what a crazy tour. We're like just hanging out, and then you see. John Davis walk in our room. Mm. You know, it just doesn't seem real. Like, oh, th- there he is. I'm just going to pretend he's not there and just keep fucking practicing what I'm doing. <laughs> what the fuck I was doing? <laughs> it's like, damn, like they're just fucking hanging out, dude. Trying to hang out. Or Brian, like just long fingers popping his head God, around. God, <laughs> hi guys. What the hell? What are you doing hanging out with us? <laughs> head just wanted to hang around and be around Dan Kenny while he was super wasted yeah. because because <laughs> head sober and he just wanted to vicariously be <laughs> fucked up with <laughs> any of us. Basically. Yeah. Mm. He's like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to smell your breath or anything. Just don't worry. About it. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna like watch you be silly. All right. Okay. <laughs> were you were you fucking DK kick ass around him every night or what? Oh, dude. I turned up. <laughs> I turned up. I, mean, I turned it, up. It was just, it was just so much fun. Because yeah. after you got to, pl- after you played a sick ass show, you still got to watch fucking corn. That's you know? that is pretty sick. And then after, not you, only that, but corn doing their self titled. Yeah, they insane. God so, damn, that's right. Yeah. Th- this brings up like so many memories of mine where it's just like, I used to grow up thinking that if you were going to open for Slayer, that the whole crowd would hate you. So yeah. I always thought, like, you open for these big bands, like, everyone's going to fucking boo you off the totally. stage. You yeah. know? So, like, it goes back to, like, a memory that I have, which I've probably said this a million times before, but, like, we played with Slayer in 2009, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, we we were we played with them at the Spokane Knitting Factory, I believe, yeah, and it was just us, it was just us and Slayer. And Fuck. like 2009, like 2009, <laughs> you weren't even like barely 20 years old, you know, like we were fucking <laughs> yeah. kids. And, and we start and, and that was the first day of this tour, which the next day was going to be in Canada where we started in, in like fucking huge arenas. Hockey arenas. Yeah, hockey arenas with Megadeth, Machine Head, and Slayer. I don't even remember the order, but we had this one show with them and I remember like, oh, they're going to fucking hate You us. made me nervous yeah. before that show with all of your shit talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was <laughs> like, oh, I'm, I wasn't that that extremely nervous yet, but then once you said, oh, they're going to hate us, so I was like, really? I just, <laughs> I, I grew up thinking like that. Like, I just thought like, you know, but, hey, but after like the first song, it, it though, happens you're like, though. You're like, oh yeah. No, it's fucking way crazier Dude, it than does, that. That because does happen though. Like I played with Danzig and they, they, they chanted Danzig during our set. That stuff does it happen. It does happen. You know what wow. I mean? And, and as a deathcore band, Deathcore was, believe it or not, not revered back in the day by death metal and metal dudes. They fucking hated Deathcore. Yeah. And if you were a Deathcore band, so we, of, of course, you're gonna go up there. I was even the band. Us, I understand. And you. us, yeah. and and like not for nothing. Like I say this too. We didn't start a Deathcore band. No, you know, we didn't start a band to be Deathcore. We just started a band. That, or you started a band. That. And 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 people don't realize and, or, that right, all the way back to whatever. Like. Either way, that fucking Slayer show, yep. and I think about it with the corn, like the, the way it lines up, and Mayhem with Slipknot, and like all these things, but that fucking Slayer show, when the lights went out, and we're in the back, and we're about to fucking start playing, and our intro rolls, the lights go out, the crowd goes fucking nuts, and I remember thinking, oh, fuck, they think we're Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then like we go out there and fucking murder it. Still my favorite show I've ever played in my entire yeah. fucking life. <laughs> and, and it was That's... so fucking good. I wish there was uh, footage from that. There probably is. It's got like, like backstage live footage, you mean? Internet, like somewhere. backstage footage? Uh, that or just like seeing us. It like probably from is. Cold nuts it probably yeah. is. But that's still that was fucking insane. But it's it it's like when you get done playing and you're opening for one of your favorite bands, any of them, and then you get to fucking hang out and watch the band play. Dude, it's, it's the best insane. feeling. No wonder They're it's a r- fucking blur. Yeah, and I don't remember. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's another one of those highs. Uh huh. Yeah. It's totally, the shit you dreamed of you know, is happening. We we talk about this all the time, but we we call the general public Gen Pop. That's what we call people. GP people on the outside 
of the the little fence, and that's literally all backstage is. It's literally backstage. Yeah. There, there's nothing special about it. It's a bunch. It's a sink and a pisser and a fucking an empty room with a flickering light with a weird midget in the corner <laughs> and some and some fucking nature, and some nature valley bars dude <laughs> and, 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 a, and one banana that's been half eaten by a rat <laughs> that's what's going on backstage and you know you 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 talk about gen pop as if you don't come from gen pop but the reality is that you come from gen pop we all do we all do yeah. i was uh, you know we were all those kids i'm still standing in the around gen pop you know, whatever I can be being like, hey, dude, you want to? You should should I jump in the pit? Come on, Larry, you know, you t- dare me, bro, dude. Oh, oh god, just, I, I and, and I, that's us, you know. I think about uh, which also ties into Suicide Silence too. Was like, I think it was Ozfest two thousand and five, which I didn't really know you guys back then, but we all ran into each other at the show, like kind of knew each other. But I remember being in the pit for Lamb of God and falling and fucking scraping my knee and it was mud and blood. And I was just like, fuck this. Oh, I was all pissed and fucking wearing my fucking denim vest and shit. And, like, <laughs> and, 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 and then when we did Mayhem, it was only three years later, 2008. So oh, three wow. years later, we're on tour and playing with Slipknot and like all these sick bands. So and I remember being at the, sa- at the same venue that you know, we ran into each other and saw Ozfest, and I remember just yeah. being like, "Oh, this is where I was supposed to be the whole fucking time. Like, I'm supposed to be chilling back here. I'm yeah. not supposed to be fucking falling in the pit <laughs> over there, dude. Like, fuck that. Like, I want that Nature Valley in the corner. Is that rat done with that banana? Like, yeah. Yeah. Are you done with that banana? Core? <laughs> you, gonna, you gonna finish that? <laughs> are you gonna finish that banana core? <laughs> wow, it's yeah. crazy how quick shit would change. You know, oh, yeah. I always felt that way, man. I, I would go to shows. Even at that corn show, I remember feeling that way. I remember screaming as loud as I can because I, you know, I hadn't even seen Rockstar. I don't think Rockstar had even come out yet. And I wanted to scream loud enough to be able to get pulled on stage just to sing one note on the microphone in front of all those people. That right there is something that I fully, fully remember. And like, it's never, that right there is, I don't think it's ever going to go away. And like, I think that's what keeps me here. I think that's the one thing that makes me. When I do want to like quit, end it all, walk away from it, I think that's the thing that keeps me here. Is that when I was at those shows in the general public, yeah, the way I it wanted, made you feel, I wanted yeah. to be on that stage more than anything, and that's why I go and I eat that half a banana, and that's why you know you write the records, you complete them, and you suffer through them, and you suffer through all the fifty-eight hours of. <clears throat> of work that you have to put in to be able to celebrate the 10 minutes on stage that you do get to enjoy. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. It, yeah. For, uh, having people hear the things that you make, that was, that was something that I always was like really, really all about where I was just like, man, I just want, I want fucking shag wrath or fucking somebody like, you know, like when I was a kid, like I was way into black metal and shit. So like, or like, you know, that, era of black metal yeah um but i was like man i just want to throw my demo on this on the stage and have them hear it you know like and now it's just wow. like dude i get to fucking record music and people hear it like now that's I, fucking now cool. you text with some of those people yeah you know now it's like <laughs> that's oh, yeah. crazy yeah so man we've we got like oh I, I got i got that guy's phone number yeah <laughs> what the yeah. fuck dude, sometimes it's just like i'm so happy to experience this in my body yeah I yeah i can't fucking believe it sometimes <laughs> Call call your mom. Hey, I got this guy's number. <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy's number. I got a guy's oh number. No, hey, it's, mom. It's, it's sick. Like, DK, how pumped were you when you like when you scored George's number, dude? <laughs> that was like 20 years ago, dude. Yeah. Look at you. You're still horned up even now, he dude. Is, my, he, <laughs> that's true love. He's my big brother. I, that's true love. love Never it. goes away. Dan King, what was the first tour you ever did? Selling merch for Severed Savior on the Cannibal Black Dahlia tour. <laughs> what year? Fuck. 2004. What happened on that tour? Uh, didn't the bus catch on fire? The bus catch on fire. <laughs> I almost died in the bus, dude. Wow. It burnt down in Katy, Texas. It was like 115 degrees outside. Wait, is this a serious Damn. thing? Yeah. There's footage oh, on shit. it. Damn. <laughs> You Wait, could have you, made that you, you story like, way sicker, dude. <laughs> that was the worst fucking story I, I've ever I heard. I don't like to relive that. <laughs> Mark gave me the, the sickest setup, too. It was such I, a sick setup. Uh, yeah, the bus burnt down Texas. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was real hot. It was real hot. Oh, <laughs> was real hot. He, he, was, he was giving you gems right now, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, the generator caught fire in the back of the bus, and, the, what, and I got ripped out of my bunk in my boxers by Murray, and he was like, get out of the bus! And I was like... 
I was a hungover 19 year old kid. <laughs> and then I was like, I just. That hangover walk. doesn't have shit on your hangover anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I walk out of the bus, just my box is burning my feet on the ground. And it's just like a kid go back on the bus. It was gnarly. Yeah, bad, I've seen bad the day video, in the man. office. It's crazy. I've bad seen that video. Yeah, but nuts. that was my first tour. I was like, well, what can what can be worse than this? You know? <laughs> it's only uphill, uphill for now. <laughs> Hey, see, but that—that's that, that, that's what I was gonna down. say. I think it's supposed—I think it's supposed to be downhill. No, you, know, you can only go up from oh here, but you know, God, like it's so good. That was so good. <laughs> but there's a. But I say, what's, what's I say, going, I say, that's day of my life is the the day of. Hey, the, I'll the, tell you. I'll tell you something. There's. The, you know what this reminds me of? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Uh, this fucking reminds me of right now. What the hell? Day Kenny, <sighs> me and Dan Kenny hammered at like I three in the morning drinking, eating, eating, drinking, drinking chicken nuggets. Drinking chicken nuggets. <laughs> I know, I was putting a nugget in my mouth and just dripping the sauce in there. <laughs> Dan, you know, Dan, Dan, of, Dan bought Dan you know bought what? two twenty piece nuggets and was f- feeding me yeah. nuggets every was, every ten seconds because he bunks right below mine, so you just see a creepy <laughs> hand, a creepy hand just come out with a nugget and, sit, and, then, and he just goes, out, he's going out like a little fish, oh, and oh. that's just a memory from a couple of months ago. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that was yeah. the last tour. Oh. That sounded like chicken nugget love, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you remember how uh, Chris Farley in the movie would eat fries and then just like suck the ketchup packet? <laughs> oh, dude. I still do that with Del Taco, Del yeah, Scorcho, dude. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, pro move. I Come like, on, I'm, take I'm, a bite. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my one of my favorite memories is eating ketchup filled French fries with with you <laughs> at some shitty diner in 2006. Some shitty diner. We were it was all of us, and I think Alex was the one who. Ripped a, a, a French fry in half, and, a, and then oh, with one of the red squeeze it, bottles that had the little, and then all all of us did it for the rest of the tour. We're like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> that's yeah, that's that. a pretty, that's a pretty ketchup infused move. fries. That's wow. game changer right there, game dude. Changer shit, dude. Game Jack the Box got this new new sauce called Good Good Sauce. <laughs> good Good Sauce <laughs> sounds good. It's real good. I don't, what, I don't even know how. Wait, what do you put it on? What do you put it on, Dan? Uh, burgers, but I don't even know. Uh, I don't uh, even know what the flavor sauce? is. It's a flavor I've never really even had. Is it like? <laughs> it's like a mystery airhead. It's a like mystery the white airhead. airhead. You just flavor. don't know what it is, but yeah, it's yeah, good. It, it it's tastes bo- delicious. It's Bohemian goat, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would doubt it. Only Dan Kenny would know that there's a new sauce at Jack in the Box. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> I saw. I saw it on the window driving by, and it made me want to go try. He Googled it. No, I just saw. We know they put the new shit on their on the restaurants. Yeah, I saw it. I was like. I need to try me some of that good, good stuff. I need to try me some of that. Wow. I think I might want to try some of that. <laughs> We're doing pills. It's the logical next step for you. <laughs> I drive by Jack. In, in, a, in a box often I'm like man what loser eats there oh, <laughs> you're, 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 you're a bass player to us <laughs> dude they have the tacos still are like the shittiest thing but they're so delicious dude they yeah. suck they're, they're delicious they are not they fucking it ain't suck. delicious coming out my ass I'll tell you that bro. <laughs> yep but those fucking cinnamon uh, yep. bites are, that's for it. Yep. <laughs> that's for Just it. talking yeah. about how shot that place is, and then he's like, but you know, but the but you cinnamon know what? Yeah, I've been there about 3 a.m. It's fine, whatever. <laughs> hey, it's the place that's always there for you. No, I'm, I've never <laughs> eaten that Jack in the Box yet. It's I'm open till fuck, it's box. open 24 hours, so you, you, oh eat, my those, you eat those after bar tacos, you yep. go get them. Dude, Gar- Garza learned how to roll a joint, and now he eats it. <laughs> now, now, now he look eats at Jack in the Box at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to YouTube. I found it, it's the uh, it's it's the cone effect. Like that, <laughs> it's like 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 you wrap it like a cone, and it is. I just fell in love with that that method. <clears throat> It's pretty, pretty gratifying. Excited. It is. You know, it, Gar- Garza just rolls joints. He doesn't even smoke them. Dude, the joy, <laughs> the joy, the like, joy it's, like, his, it's like changing guitar strings, but don't play guitar. The joy, the joy, the joy on Garza's face, dude. Night one at the B&B when he rolled his fucking split. On, he was like, oh, who wants to fucking smoke this thing? He was so pumped. I was like, it's a good looking fucking joint, dude. Thank you. He's like, I did it all by myself. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> and now he, now he knows how to roll to joint perfection, dude. He's, dude. he's got it down pat, dude. The joint lord. You, Meanwhile, I'm, s- I'm smoking out of a fucking space space drug puff co. <laughs> the fucking puff user dude. app to fucking smoke out of some <laughs> shit. F- future weed, dude. I, dude, like, I feel like <laughs> such a goober when I'm smoking out of that thing because it's just like I'm using an app to smoke my weed. Yeah, now. what the weed fuck? is getting way crazier. People are smoking out of like metal cones. And, oh like, wow. <laughs> Use a trash can. Uh, Jay Kenny, I don't think those people are smoking weed, dude. I, I, I'm just going to say, I'm I mean, pretty like, sure that's not what they're doing. Bombs are getting so big, and uh, you need a fucking torch now? Dude, dude. Like, 
are these are these people you're watching smoke? Do they fall over after? That's yeah. uh, oh definitely. My God. That just reminded me of when we were at the gathering of the Juggalos and fucking James Lynch. Somebody offered him a six foot bong rip, and we'd already been fucked up the whole day. And then they, he just took a huge fucking rip and passed out in front of us. Walk animal corpses playing. Holy oh, shit! shit. It's the fucking best shit ever. Dude. Something wow. from something from Beer Fest or something. Dude, it was the Jesus. best. It was fucking. He just went. I saw him just fucking knees buckle. <laughs> <laughs> Head down. <laughs> he was down. Dude. And that's a long way to fall, dude. James Lynch is a he's a tall boy, dude. Oh dude. my god, he's a, man. He's, he's a he was related to Paul Bunyan. <laughs> wow, that's, that's his fucking ball punion. Great, 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 great <laughs> grandpa. <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Duke. Wait, is he a Duke? Was he a Baron? Baron. 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 Baron von, von James L- Lynch, dude. Baron von Lynch. Seamus von Lynch. <laughs> Seamus. <laughs> well, boys, I think we covered a lot of ground. Do we miss oh, anything? Man. Oh, everything, dude. Oh, they miss, <laughs> me, they miss me on some bullshit. That's it. That's it, bitch ass parasite. You, <laughs> you guys missed the guards or any beef, though. We're in an active battle to see who can who can catch the gnarliest fate on to, tour. You guys yeah. are gonna probably it's crack. You guys are gonna away. Uh, low key, we're probably just gonna kiss dude. all day. You guys are gonna crack me up on tour. I already know it. Uh, it's on, it, dude. It is on the way. It's, yeah. on, it's on, on the way. It's, it's coming. Whenever I think that Ernie's got you, you get him back dude. hard. <laughs> hey, yo, he's not. He's not wrong. I, he, 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 can, he can keep up. He can keep up. <laughs> Fucking dude. dingus battle over but here. But eventually, my, he'll, my he'll, favorite, he'll my fall favorite, to these so, fucking. To these massive shoulder fucking traps, oh, dude. It's all right. No, I'll root, carry you, just, you around you on tour. I, I know. I'm loading, <laughs> I'm loading his gun for him right now, dude. I already <laughs> like, know. Give him 30 seconds. I can see it on you his better, face. He's you, formulating right now. You better watch out on the stage, dude. He's got some secret tactics up my, there. My oh, favorite man. was Garza walking in and going, Ah, anyone have some Tylenol? Uh, my back my back really hurts from carrying all you guys. <laughs> 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 Shit, dude! I was like, "What the hell?" What He's he like, "Get to think, my back was finally starting to feel good today." He's like, and you walked in, and now my fucking back's in pain again. <laughs> the moment I see Ernie, I'm like, "My fucking back starts hurting." Oh, <laughs> He's like, "Damn, I woke up today and got out of bed, and just shit didn't feel right. I knew you were close by." He's like, <laughs> "Dude, January, dude, my back was fucking feeling good. The moment I, I fucking hang on Ernie again, man, I got a sore back, dude. Been carrying he, back. he told me, he told me, he's like, he, he texted me when he got home from having like lunch meeting with me. He's like, "Bro, my back's fucking." Me, he, got a, he got a er, he got a he got a herniated disc, dude. He did. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, oh my god! And, and we're done. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and and we are done. And well, that's it. Unfortunately, this is this podcast is going to come out uh, after the Chaos Carnage tour comes out. But I want to thank everyone that bought tickets because, I mean, a uh, little, little backstory, quick. But uh, SS has never been a presale band. So to see these massive pre-sales and shows Insane. even selling out, I don't even know like what I think about that. It's just, it's just the, thank you. It's yeah. fucking crazy. Uh, like literally, like the first two thirds of the tour uh, was was looking to be sold out. So th- thank you. I, I can't I can't believe it. I'm, I'm pretty sure by the time the tour is over, we'll be like, what the fuck just happened? It just it just <laughs> reaffirms, <laughs> dude. Let's be serious. Shout out to fucking Lorna Shore for being Straight bringing up. the fucking heat to this tour. God damn it, these boys they're, are they're, on they're fucking. Fire. They're I know this is coming yeah. out in four months, and in four months, you know, with the turn of events and how the deathcore scene is, they might not be as hot. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> but, but no, no, those guys are crushing, and they're you know Austin is you know one of the main dudes in that. That's band. my baby boy right there. We go, and, we gonna see him and in I've, a couple I've, days. I've known that cat for a long time. And I've seen him go from you know thugs to riches, and you know the the man deserves everything that they, that he has right now, and you know the, the you know will. Is a tremendous fucking dude, and the boys are br- really bringing some fucking awesome music out. So, yep. Sh- shout out to all the bands on the tour. That's shout out to J- cra- J- crazy, to crazy massive pack. JJ and Dan at mm-hmm. uh, Thirty Three and West, our booking and West. agency, yep, yep. who put the tour together. It's yeah, it's gonna murder. And we're Cur- all, curate, we're all curated stoked. the tour of the year. It's what gonna I've heard be chaos and carnage, people, guys. Oh, oh my god, so much chaos. <laughs> Carnifex, but thank also you. Carnage, dude. Want a short thank you. Angel Maker, Signs of the Swarm, Distant, uh, Pond of Burning Body, Pond of Burning Body, dude, great, so much, great dude. lineup, man. Dude, yeah. Win, Wins Plague bands. for the West Coast shows, oh, dude. What's up? Yeah, the, dude, about to be just a big party actually. today. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, bands, for a, a great tour because we're talking like it already happened. So thank, thank, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, for it's because it we know killer. it's gonna be sick. Though that was a great, that was a great tour. Yeah, that was a great tour. That was pretty tight, right? I think we all could agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's mostly we're about to play it, but that shit was sick. It's mostly gonna be sick because I'm just gonna carry everyone in Garza on my back, dude. The entire tour, dude. 
Don't I was worry relying about it. I got on you. it, dude. I'm old. I'm shot, dude. <laughs> we'll, have a, we'll have a stick drop count. I never been oh. so disrespected in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it's all love, though, bro. I did, hey, I, I respectfully disrespect you with a lot of love, dude. Oh, awesome. Wow. I'll buy you pizza. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, that's disrespectful. <laughs> well, thanks for having us, guys. Uh, thank you guys for all being here, man. I can't Sick. believe we got the whole band here. Yeah, dude, Stoke. full band podcast. How about that? Let's go. Holy Woo. shit. I don't know if I've ever seen one. So I'm hey, f- fucking pumped it happened. Uh, this is either going to drop the same day as the first song of our new record or at least a week prior. So if you're listening to this, watching this, new music is either out in the week or out now. So and I hope you enjoy it. We've uh, you've heard the process about it. You heard uh, the backstory of it and how much we enjoyed writing it for all you. Yep. So uh, we we uh, we can't wait for you to hear more of it. And uh, yeah. Uh, so check out uh, us on Instagram, uh, the band name, and we're trying to get on TikTok somehow. So if I don't know how, because if you don't know, our band name is Band from TikTok, uh, and. Uh, it's a sensitive trigger word these days. Apparently, the word suicide is triggered. And a part of me is saying that, uh, part of YouTube's gonna part gonna yank this episode. So hopefully, you see this. <laughs> <laughs> we can just use unalive silence, dude. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's the term now, Fucking dude. Fucking whack. <laughs> so insane. Trying, sensitive ass bitch. Trying to dude, find a we, workaround. We just gotta dude. pull a Pantera and just call ourselves Suicidio. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Damn. Oh, do you, think it's, do you think it's banned in other languages, too? Oh, sh- I don't know. Could we, we should finally just... be Suicidio Silencio? Oh, Ooh. sweet. Damn, Sam, hella fancy, dude. Could we finally? We have Enya's on the fucking tops of the... Yeah, dude. Let's, let's, <laughs> Enya. Uh, yeah. Let's start looking into that. I bet we can make that fly. <laughs> well, sick. Well, everyone, uh, thank yeah. you for listening and watching. And yeah. uh, until next time. Later. Bye. Bye.